No, worry and mouth. Well, I'll make sure. <laughs> I want you to know that he judged you for your salsa water earlier. Who judged me for my salsa water? That's you drinking that. I can't drink seltzer yes, water. You drinking that is fucking. Are we crazy. recording? Everything gone. Why well, can't drink a seltzer water? With no like alcohol mixed. That's like like a cut. You drink seltzer water straight. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Do you it's drink a, water straight? It's a little grandpa ish. Oh, I'm, I'm in my thirties now. <laughs> I forgot y'all age a little bit. Man, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like dog like years, white people <laughs> years, dog years. <laughs> you got four more years left. Yeah, you man. Out of here? Listen. <laughs> Cancer are coming. You know who else is coming? And we're going to go after the criminals who stole billions of relief money. That's your man. Oh, oh you PPP niggas is shaking in your boots now. You niggas was busting checks all year. I took mine out on a different social security number. I'm good. <laughs> Y'all was busting checks all year. Tomorrow, yo, all you got to do is this. And you know what they say. Any plan that starts with all you got to do, you going to jail. That's how Biden going to come in your crib. Getting your PP shit. Feds is knocking on your door, banging this <laughs> right out the tank. <laughs> we get that game interview today. Is it tonight? I think it, it airs on Revolt tonight, as in Thursday. How much, how much cap you think Game is spitting? Oh, he's gonna have on a bucket hat. Yeah, I cannot wait. But I think that Game be trolling a lot, man. I don't think he's. Serious with none of this shit. I think Game has been caught in so many lies that he's done them purposely. Yeah. Like, he knows point, I'm going in to tell you guys a lie. Yeah. I mean, it makes for good entertainment. Um, But it's just like, I just, I hope he, this is for entertainment because nobody believes that. We've seen some of the captions that are floating around from the interview. Game drunk with Nori instigating. Yeah, this might be the, the biggest live festival of all time. Yeah. I think and you so. know Nori's going to co-sign every lie. <laughs> well, Nori likes to make sure that his pod is entertaining, no mm. matter what. Like, you know, let the guests say whatever they want to say. And, you know, if it's entertaining, it's entertaining. But um, I saw one that you sent to the chat saying that uh, Game told a uh, hoe he had to check in. Yeah, he's not good in L.A. no more. He can't come to L.A. I believe Jay has the biggest house in California. In L.A. right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw oh, I saw another clip. Oh, no, this was on Clubhouse. It wasn't on uh, from the interview. Game had said he wrote What Up Gangster for 50 on Get Richard Dash Ryan. Was Game even around 50? Man? No. <laughs> oh, so he's just having fun. If 50 man. wrote What Up Gangster before he even signed a so, trade. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was to say. I don't know, but okay. Maybe he added a bar, helped him here and there. I don't know. Listen, man. It's going to be entertaining. I know that. I, listen, y- y'all know I love Game. I think I mean, his photography crazy. is amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he's that, hilarious. That speaks for itself. But um, I, I'm, I was... Uh, I had mentioned to you about us possibly sitting down with Game. I think one time last year when we were in LA. I know, and I'm I'm tight that that Nori beat us to it because yeah. I don't think we'll be able to top whatever Nori's no, 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 about no, no. to do with Game. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> talk to Game now. This is, he got his he got his podcast and career mm-hmm. out the way early. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna watch it because I, I like I like Game. Uh, Nori's obviously fam, so I think that uh those two personalities together will make some some entertaining conversations. I think Game is going to start podcasting after this. I think he's going to see the response that he gets with this Drink Champs episode. Because I think this is going to be one of the bigger Drink Champs. And that's saying something. Yeah. Just because I know Game. Yeah, and then, again, it's, it's a lot that Game has seen and, and, and been a part of. And uh, I know everybody does want to hear what he has to say about the uh, Super Bowl snub. If you I want to hear what he has to say about Jimmy Henchman. I don't give a fuck about the Super Bowl. <laughs> you think? Oh, well, I'm sure they... I don't know how in depth he may go into that. It's all public record. No, I mean on 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 Drink Champs with Nori. Mm. I just don't know, but I'm pretty sure Nori asked, brought that up. Oh, for sure, Nori was there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. for for sure, Nori was around. Game's not the only one that was shooting outside of Hot 97. Nori no. was too. Yeah, Nori was allegedly, there. allegedly, it's, it's on all, camera. I think everyone's admitted it. <laughs> it is. It's on camera, and, and it's on camera. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I do want to check that episode out. Shout out to Nori for another uh, any of them. And EFN uh, for another dope Drink Champs uh, episode. Um, what's going on with you, though, man? How was the weekend? Uh, How was the week? I'm the sorry. week, rather. Yeah. Um, it was, I don't we, remember the days anymore. We did the uh, Soho, Soho House thing with uh, Conway. That mm-hmm. was fun. We'll have some clips from that. But Shout out to Conway. Cool to talk with him about the album. Number one rap album in the country. Then we went to dinner. You picked up the tab. A little private room. I arrived. They said, are you here for Jamil? 
I was like, I am. How did you know that See, I was here for Jamil? Because when I got there, the host said, oh, I think your friend is already here. I didn't even know you were there yet. I was like, who is she talking about? Because you're a regular there. And then I and then I turned the corner and I saw the the palest face in the room. I said, yeah, that's my guy. I was not there. That was the well, one on the Upper the, West Side. The, <laughs> that was not the one in Harlem. You know when the candle light hits your face, it makes it a little more white. No, I the candle was I was hitting the candle. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. <laughs> I lit the candle you with my can, face. You a candle in the sun? <laughs> it's a very beautiful song, actually. And he's now back with his girl, so we may we might get another. That's what it's called on Miguel shit, right? What? I don't think it's candles. the outro? It's not candles in the sun? No. <laughs> Is that it? Sure. It's candles really? in the sun? Really? Yeah, don't talk to me about my Miguel knowledge. That's a classic album. Miguel's album? Kaleidoscope Dreams to me is a classic album. I'm not mad at that. Yo, you know what album I was listening to uh, this week? And I, I was like, damn, we didn't, I don't think we gave this album when it came out enough love. Uh, Daniel Caesar's album. Yeah. I can't pronounce it, but. Fr Fruitian? <laughs> Fruitian? However you say it. Daniel Caesar's album is really dope. Uh, what's up with Dan? You don't, you don't speak to him? No. No. Um, I did, did I ever publicly say that we, we squashed beef? You did, and we saw we we saw him when we were leaving a uh, highlight room in L.A. Oh yeah, that's right. We Softest beef him. in the world, by the way. Yeah, pause. They, how, how do you have beef with Yo. Daniel Caesar? I didn't Great have guy. beef with him. Oh, he had beef with you. He had a little issue with you. No. What did he, you say? No, I didn't. Say, I've been. I played Daniel Caesar before anybody. Period. Mm -hmm. I do take. I don't take a lot of credit for certain stuff. I'm taking credit for the beginning of Daniel Caesar as far as getting those first records out there. I am going to take credit on that one. Fruitian. So he, I, I, I forgot. I, was he defending Yes Jewels or some shit? Mm -hmm. That's what it was. Okay. And mind you, I don't think I said anything about him besides of like, that's weird. That's a weird thing for someone to do. Defend Yes Jewels. <laughs> Just thought it was odd. That's, but if that's his friend, that's not odd to defend your friend. I don't think they know each other. <laughs> oh, then that's odd. <laughs> <laughs> now that changes I don't everything. Think, I don't if think they don't ever know met... each other, then that's odd. That's odd. Um, and he had said something to our former co-host along the lines of, well, I bet Rory uses the N-word too. Okay. Another person yet yet again accusing me of using this I word. I don't know why people think or want you to use they that just, word so bad. They just want me to. That shit is so stupid, man. It's just the dumbest shit in the world. So I think I went on the pod and was like, that's corny. Don't just, don't just put that on somebody like, oh, he probably says it. Yeah. And I was like, man, fuck Daniel Caesar. Then I was in uh, Long Beach. I forgot what festival it was. You know, I was festivaling. Yeah. Um, I was in the Artist Village because I'm important. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. Right. Not snuck, really. snuck a wristband. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sharing wristbands with somebody. Mm -hmm. Back there and, and, and someone taps on my shoulder and I turn around. He's like, I don't want to fight. I was like, I didn't think you wanted to. <laughs> hey man, like, like, and we had a great talk. He was like, no, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that shit. I apologize. And we've been friends since. Daniel Caesar is a great guy, man. Super, super good guy. Super cool. Uh, great artist. Um, so yeah, shout out to Daniel Caesar. That Fruity in the album is, is really great. I was listen, listening to it this week. And uh, we need some new Daniel Caesar, man. Was he, 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 of course, wasn't successfully canceled. He was just on one of the biggest no, records with Justin Bieber. Successfully canceled. I think he might be one of the only people that was successfully canceled. People love Daniel Caesar. He's on the number one record of 2021. When Wait. Justin Bieber's singing about fucking apple pies and Georgia peaches and shit. Yeah, but why? Isn't Daniel Caesar on that song? Yes, yeah, yeah, he's then, on that song. Okay, Him yeah. and Gibeon, right? Yeah. Yeah, but that doesn't. Daniel Caesar is not canceled. Bro, Daniel Caesar had the world, bro. Have you heard anything about Daniel But I don't think Caesar he's canceled. I think he's just not working. Thing? I think he's maybe it's doing It's been years. And yeah, I think he put something out. It's been years. He's you know? canceled where? On Twitter? No. It, His album sold. Yeah, like that's so he's not canceled. I don't think he's putting out any music, but he's not canceled. Okay. If he puts out music tomorrow, people are gonna gonna stream it. That's Daniel Caesar. He's a really, really talented artist. I was just listening to his album and I was like, damn, like we haven't heard a mm. project from him. Cause that came out in 2017. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Nah, so I was listening to it. Great album. Uh Miguel's album Kaleidoscope Dreams is another great album. Um, would love to have new music from both of these guys. Miguel is uh, happily back with his wife, so I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a a new project uh, full of love and pretty melodies. Oh no, we got. Um, I was thinking that was the second album. Case Study 01 came out in 2019 from Daniel Caesar. Okay, Pharrell's on it. John Mayer, Brandy. That record with Brandy is fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. Love again. You can't be canceled when you're doing records with fucking Brandy. I'm sorry. 
there's only one person that the culture successfully canceled outside of Robert Kelly. And that was Chrisette Michelle. And I think it's time that we bring Chrisette Michelle back, God damn it. Well, that's because you're on the same team as her. That's I would why. I bring Chrisette back before we bring Daniel Caesar back. What? What did Daniel do? No, somebody tell me. What did Daniel do to get to get canceled? Seriously. Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? He No. Okay. He defended Yes Jules, right? Exactly. That's why he got... But it's yeah. the way he defended Yes Jules. So he put out a tweet and basically it says... Why are we being mean to, to Jules? Why are we being mean to white people right now? This is a serious question. Why is it that we're allowed to be disrespectful and rude to everybody? And when anybody returns any type of energy to us, that's not equality. He was mean to me. He was. Out of he was <laughs> Wait, out of he life. tweeted that and then put the N word on my jacket. He was out of live fucking caping. Like, why are we being fucking mean to her? Like, I don't give a fuck. You guys can fucking cancel me. I don't care. You guys should stop being fucking mean to her. Like, people weren't being mean to her for a reason. Like, Scotty and them didn't have a reason for the shit that they were calling him out, calling her out on. He should have just minded his business when it came to that because everybody was right. He's Canadian. That's fine. <laughs> what do you want from him? But if you want to go cape, I'm fucking around. you want to cape for them, you could cape for them. But I, you got to deal with what comes with it. But he said cancel them. So shit, that's what they did. But yes, Jewel's not even canceled. How you get canceled for someone that's not canceled <laughs> off what they did? <laughs> like, that's the, this whole cancel shit to me is just like people just wake up one day and decide, yo, we're going to just send out a bunch of aggressive tweets towards this person. But that cancel shit, I don't, we should not be canceling Daniel Caesar. I think I now have a reissue with him. I didn't realize he tweeted, why are we being mean to white people? And then he was mean to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that very same day. Well, it's balance. You said equality, right? I'm going to defend white people, but then I'm also going to shit on white people. But why you got to defend Jules and, and shit on me? I was going to say, how are you going to defend one culture vulture and not the other one? That's true. That well, people want to fuck Jules. People don't want to fuck me. Eh, I've seen some guys in the tweets lately. <laughs> They're like your eyes and your yeah. beard. You know I mean, the, the, Fez, the Fez thing, you and Fez are like the two hottest gingers in town right now. Hey, yeah, he brought the stock up. Yeah, I can't sure. be mad. He better not die because I need a, another... <laughs> Well, 2024, they, they were, I'm back. Were, yeah, we found out they were supposed to kill him, they but they changed him, but... it the day before the shoot and uh, decided, no, nah, we'll keep him on because we might need to bring him back for the next season because the people seem to really love him. A heartthrob. Yeah. Heart they could have called you. Listen, I could play Fez. Yeah, absolutely. I could play the older Fez. The older Fez. <laughs> like actually, instead of flashbacks. Like he actually looks older than future. you. He does look older than you. That's the funniest crazy. shit. He looks older than you. I can talk really slow. Rue, come on. Rue. <laughs> Rue, get out, Rue. Rue. All you got to no do is more take a few shots Rue. and you start really talking like that. That's your real voice after you take a few shots. We, uh, so yeah, how we did fuck Rue, man. How he. He look at her like a little sister. Oh, there's plenty of guys that have fucked their sister oh, yeah. that, that wasn't their a, sister. A good, you could tell That's that a trailer park a special guy. right there. I met bad, like sister, not I know, actually I know, fucked I know, my their bad. sister. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. All white people just don't have incest. I apologize. I like said I'm sorry. It's nasty. What were you saying? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um... <laughs> what, man? He looks at her like a little sister, so. Daddy fucking got hooked on more drugs? He didn't get her hooked on more drugs. He gave her, he provided her with drugs when she came for it so that she won't fuck around and go get some unsafe shit from someone else. Yeah, then he Oh, that's brought, responsible. He brought a drug addict around enablers that were doing heroin in his backseat. He didn't know that girl was going to be with that dude. She wasn't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Heard you. Yeah, I don't know why they brought her along for that shit anyway. But. You're going to keep a drug addict in, in a trap house. <laughs> that, that sounds counterproductive. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a smart idea. But I'm here to defend and love Fez. He's done a lot for my career, my face. He did. Uh, I, I've gotten zero pussy because of it. But it, is, it is nice to, you know, have redheads actually look appealing for once we but. uh we, so we did the conway shit at soho house and then uh we went out after i met up with you guys oh and, that's uh, right we did go out we met you guys at last lap and uh rory came to the door and because the gentleman at the door was giving me a not a hard time but a little difficult time he asked me for a ticket i didn't know you needed tickets to go on last lap. i didn't know that either i had no idea he probably didn't want you to come in i felt like that and i mm. was kind of like ah, I, I think this gentleman doesn't want me here he doesn't mm. like my face whatever but um so you came and got me and we walked through last lap and it literally felt like we walked through four different parties. Absolutely. Like there was a lot of shit going on in last lap. And like that. different phases of the party too. Like there was like the calm beginning, like, oh, let's have a glass yeah. of wine. Then in the corner, there was degenerates doing fucking shots of tequila. Yeah. Then upstairs, it's just people drinking out the bottle straight. 
people grinding on each other on the wall with no music playing. Uh, people, you know, you know, I like the I like the corner of people that's like the people that are ready to go at the parties. Mm. Like they had their coat on, you can tell like they're ready to walk out. They are having like that one last conversation with that person before they leave. Yeah, see, if I like possibly that I could get some pussy. I like that group right there. That's mm. where I like to stand in 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 the parties. But um, it was good to see you know people out in last lap having a good time, seeing yeah. some familiar faces. It was good to see you. I was like, Ma, out with us? Yeah, man. Like, Look, you, man, right? I, went, crazy. You know, I went I went by Astor Club. I, I got I got my medication, you know what I'm saying? And then I um I came up and met y'all. But I had yeah. to get out of there, man. Once things started, I started hearing conversations on the sides. <laughs> it's just funny to hear the type of shit. Yo, let me eat you out on the phone. I'm like, what? I'm like, yo, I'm about to get up out of here, y'all. I mean, in that gentleman's defense, it was what, 1 30 in the morning? He had been drinking, he was on FaceTime. It's about yeah, that time to got, ask those type of questions. Yeah, but <laughs> I listen. I'm is that not, not mad the time to be like, "Can been, I eat your pussy?" We've all been there, so I'm not mad at it. It was just a lot of shit going on, and then that was kind of like the, "All right, I might need to get out of here." Mm. This is like a lot of shit going on in here tonight. But y'all was safe. Y'all, uh, you found your bag. I thought you lost your laptop. That was like going to ruin the night for me. I was like, Rory then got super lit and forgot yeah. where he put his his laptop. I mean, at that point, I didn't care. <laughs> no, you should. You should. Oh, I cared. Like that. Fuck. I was like, if he lost his laptop, I know how much shit you have in your laptop. So I was like, damn, this is gonna ruin his fucking. Just would have been another thing to add to the list. Yeah, but um, it was good. It was good to go out and see people out of last lap. Um, what else did we do? We took Conway to dinner mm -hmm. last night before he uh got out of town. Uh, kicked it with him and his team. Shout out to Jay Skis. Love the genius. Chad, DJ T. Con's DJ. Really good. One of the better sets I've I've heard he in quite some really time. He really was playing some really fucking. I mean, I wasn't expecting to hear some of those records he played at, at Soho House. He was playing fucking C sides, yeah. not even B sides. But he said he grew up in that era, the mixtape era, heavy dip set. Uh, you know, he was playing. He was playing some A Z shit. I was like, all right, fam. No, it's an A Z records. They weren't even on albums. So exactly. Like, this, what is going on? Shout out to DJ T. Uh, he did his thing. Um, and yeah, that was that was our week pretty much. I, I really do, didn't do nothing outside of that. Nas and AZ never, never even tried to do that album, huh? The funny you, thing is, I think they sh they could do it now. I think, I mean, I think with everything Nas is doing with Hit Boy, I think there's a room for a Nas AZ project with Hit Boy, and he's in shape too. I mean, yeah. uh, Do or Die Two was great. Mm -hmm. Mega is still in shape. He's about to put out the realness too. Uh, we might need a firm reunion, like a proper one with Mega. Mm. Because Mega and Nas are on great is terms Foxy now. Is Foxy still a part of it? Would she, would she still be a part of it? I heard think? Terrible Math is more than welcome on the album. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need that. We need Terrible Mathematics. That verse is fucking crazy. Listen, man, I'm, I'm all for a firm album. Mm. But it would have to be everyone. I mean, Hit Boy got them, got them together and they sounded good on uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Nas' album before this one, King's Disease. Was it on one or two? One, I believe. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want Dre to, to produce it, though. You don't want Dre to produce it. It'll one, it'll never come out if that's the case. Okay, um, but why wouldn't you? That's why you wouldn't want him to do it because you don't think it would come out. Um, I don't know where Dre is at right now musically. I mean, he's the greatest ever, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that he may not be in the space to create a firm album. Like, I would rather some active producers be the ones that would put that together, and ones that are in touch with what is going on at the current moment. Do Not to say Dre isn't, but I'm just saying it, it wouldn't come out. <laughs> Do we still want the Detox album? I mean, I thought we got it. Isn't that the Compton album? Is it? I suppose. I don't know. I think I think I think the Detox was supposed to sound a lot different from the Compton album. The Compton album, I think, was something that happened almost by accident. The movie. Yeah. Like I think that happened. It was kind of like, oh shit, we might as well just put out a a whole joint. But if you don't give Dre an incentive, then he's not going to do shit. No, but I know there are songs recorded for that Detox album. Oh, thousands. So I, I think that we, I don't know. I feel like we, we need that. I, I feel like, And I feel like now is the time for that type of, those albums that we were supposed to get years ago. I think now more than ever is a good time for those type of albums to come out because mm -hmm. of the way you can put out albums market, uh, do a show around it, uh, even do a documentary around it. Yeah. I think there's so many different ways to present an album now and an album that's as nostalgic as the detox was supposed to be for the culture. Mm. I think now more than ever is a dope time for us to get that. I mean, just all the Dre's hard drives. I'm curious what 
and I don't want to talk about his demise. I hope Dre lives forever. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I see what, what happened with Prince and everything. All of Dr. Dre's hard drives, I'm curious what's going to happen with all those. Hmm. That's going to be interesting. And I wonder what he's going to put in his will of like, no one can open any of these hard drives. They're all password protectors. <laughs> so then we'll never, <laughs> so they will never get it. Yeah, that's what I think. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Speaking of nostalgic shit, Murder Inc. Uh, is putting out a, what is it, a documentary? Or is it a, docu a series? series. Yeah, docu-series. So I like docu-series. Like series. Parts, if I'm not mistaken. I like those. I don't like just one. I feel like you try to cram too much shit into one episode. Well, they have quite a history to tell. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, I hope they start with just Irv as the first episode mm -hmm. and his story prior to Murder, Inc. Because mm -hmm. that's a crazy story in itself. I mean, say what you want about Irv. Irv has been the catalyst for some of our favorite shit ever. Maul is sitting here today because he, of Irv Gotti. He had... <laughs> that's Irv? crazy. I wouldn't need to know that. Story. But I understand what you're saying. Like, Irv's fingerprints are on a lot of the culture, a lot of uh, classic records, classic artists that we got classic albums um so yeah he's definitely irv Gotti is a a figure in hip-hop that you know those that know know his story and know exactly how long he's been doing mm -hmm. what he does and how intricate he was in a lot of careers and stuff like that before murder inc yeah like mike geronimo shit Nas, jay yeah so i mean it's, it's you know dmx it's definitely a story dmx of course it's definitely a story there with irv Gotti, and i'm glad that this is a docuseries because it's a lot of shit that we need they need to cover yeah, not even outside of the music they put out, or mm -hmm. even the Juna shit, or even the fucking court cases and the Preem shit. Like that story is how long? How how in depth do you think they go with that? I mean, they won the case in court. They can talk about it. They could mm -hmm. give every single I can't speak every last detail you could give at that point. But do you again? Do you think they stay away from that? No, nah, because at this point that is a a very uh, intricate part of the story and the legacy of Murder Inc. Like, yeah, you can't tell a story of Murder Inc. without addressing that part of it. Yeah, but I I do think they made more of a, I, the feds made more of a bigger deal. For those that don't know, they got arrested uh, Irv and his brother for money laundering. They were mm -hmm. saying Supreme was taking his money and laundering it through Murder Inc. Mm -hmm. Um, and they beat the feds, which fucking never happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I just think they I think the feds kind of blew that out of proportion, and it really wasn't that. Like there was yeah. really just a friendship between. Irv and Preem at that point. Yeah. Well, it wasn't... You know, they were trying to tie things together to make something stick. I know. They was extorting them and all that type of shit. And mm -hmm. listen, I don't know the fucking truth. All I know is they did win the court case and that they did not do any money laundering. So yeah, they can go through that entire thing. Yeah. Well, this is definitely going to be a docuseries that I think uh, is done well. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they're going to let people just, you know, put some bullshit together. I think this is going to be really dope. And it's good to uh, get this story out there. Because, you know, this generation now is not too familiar with Murder, Inc. and Ja Rule and Irv yeah. Gotti, you know what I mean? They're not too familiar with all of that. So I think this is a good time for this documentary. And I think Ja needs his flowers, man. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. And I'm I'm saying that objectively because I do have a bias on the other side. But mm -hmm. I, Ja deserves his flowers. Irv deserves, like, I, I really want people to realize what that Murder, Inc. movement was like. Mm -hmm. Like, they were controlling everything. Yeah. Like, the way QC is dominating right now, Murder, Inc. was dominating. Ashanti. You can't talk about murdering without Ashanti. Shit, Lloyd. Lloyd. <laughs> Lloyd had a run. Yeah. Like, they was really doing some shit. They did a lot of great shit, man. Um, what, do we know when this airs? Yeah, this summer. Sometime this summer. Okay. Sometime this summer. And Herb is also doing the, the Prime documentary mm -hmm. or series. I'm not sure which one it is. I have to look at that as well. But um, I'm excited for that. Just that that's my era. So Mary J. Blige is a... Uh... Coming out with a Lifetime movie. She's executive producing about her life. Is it called My Life? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, um, that should be interesting. Mary had a, a an interesting life outside of music. We heard it in the music. Absolutely, and and still is having an interesting life mm -hmm. after all that she has done in her career. Uh, something we was talking about this this week. Something. What uh you, you said uh Mary J is paying alimony. What did you what did you say? She so she's definitely out here. <laughs> no, wait, hold on. I said something <laughs> off mic, sir. <laughs> Do not have me offending a black black woman right now. <laughs> no, nah, it was just funny because I didn't I never looked at it like that. So when I thought about it, I was like, oh, you know what, Rory, you might be right. I hate that it had to be Mary, but I am happy for what it represents. 
for men okay. across the world. Yeah. Yeah. That was a win for men. It was. It was a win for men. Sorry, Mary. That was a win for men. We still love you. You had to be the really sacrificial lamb in that regard. Um, Dreamville Fest. I know we're just rush, running through shit right now, which I'm not mad at because there isn't really shit going on. I like when we just run through a bunch that of That lineup looks shit. great, though. That Dreamville lineup. That lineup yes. is crazy. Um, you guys want to go? Well, if we don't have to do shit for Grammys, I'm yeah, definitely going. I'm definitely going to that. I went to the last one and it was, it was a really... Really well put together um, festival, but DJ Drama with Wayne, Jeezy, and Ti might mm. be one of the greatest things I've ever seen on a festival lineup before. That's hard. That's gonna be nuts. Like the rest of this shit is great. Jairo and Ashanti, Earth Gang, Blast, mm -hmm. Kaylani, Lil Baby, Wizkid, Wale, T Pain. That's gonna be great. Larry June, Ari Lennox, obviously the rest of of Dreamville, but that Gangsta Grills set is gonna be insane. I'm definitely going to that. Mm. I like the fact that festivals are back. Um, everyone seems to be ready to hit the stage and, mm. and perform again. I got to go to that. Well, it's either that or Vegas. Same same weekend as Grammys. Grammy weekend, yeah. I might pick Dreamville over the Grammys. Well, I don't know. I, are you are gonna you do? Going it? To you're not gonna go to the. Yeah, you're putting the list together. You're curating the Rock Nation brunch. I am not. Curating the Rock Nation brunch. They do not want me to curate the Rock Nation brunch. That that would be pretty funny though. <laughs> it's so many Instagram bitches there. Why? If you curate it. Oh. I'm I'm importing. I'm overseas. So you're sex trafficking. Yeah, that sounded crazy. <laughs> That's nobody important. said you're the JP Morgan of Nobody Never said mind. anything about yeah. sex. See, y'all threw sex in it. I just said I'm inviting a different type of no, woman. You said you're, right. you're importing. importing. Like, yeah, I'm bringing them in from uh, overseas. A good I'm, they're crossing uh for 90 day fiance, right? No, for the just for the brunch. And then mm. they can go back okay. go back to their to their respective Check homes. And Italy. Well, I don't know. Italy, yes. Italy has some beautiful women. Beyonce is gonna kick those bitches out immediately. Of the Beyonce brunch? won't be there. <laughs> At the brunch? Why? If you think Beyonce don't scroll down that invite list. She not gonna know them names. <laughs> She's not gonna know how to pronounce them names. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's gotta be women that uh. nobody knows. Right? And then they show up and it's the most beautiful women. Like, oh my mm. God, this is beautiful, gorgeous. And they're cool, you know? And it's like, yeah, like, not the, some new faces. Yeah. We need some new faces. Yeah, yeah, we need some new faces at these brunches, man. And then we you just some... say, Robert Kraft invited them. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like something like that. And Yo, just, I just have a good time. Like, don't you like going somewhere and seeing, like, people you've never seen before? Of course. Like, those I, are the best. That's why I hate coming here. Yeah, exactly. See, every I morning, see too much. I would have to come here and see these faces. <laughs> I love you, Damaris, though. You know that. But anybody else, these two in here, for close, can we close that? <laughs> uh, are you going to propose to any of them? Uh, I'm leaving that up to you. I know okay. you one for one. So I know. I don't Am know, I? Yeah. <laughs> she said yes. Like, that's, Fair. That's the score. See, this is what people don't talk about with en engagements. She just has to say yes. That's true. Like, you don't have to really get married. She just has to accept the proposal. Buy, buy yourself some time. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Except if she says yes, ex job done. Edit score. Point score point for Rory. Edit point here for mm. no, I'm just saying, if you if, if you propose to somebody and they accept, that's a win. Because mm. oh. we've seen people propose and get denied. I wonder if there's any, like, we've seen, like, serial monogamous who, like, just go from relationship to relationship can never be mm -hmm. single. We know people that have been married five, six, seven times. Mm -hmm. I, is there any, like, serial engagers? Like you just get I'm engaged sure <laughs> and then just break it off and then get engaged again. But I feel like the rings constant, it's expensive. constant rings will be expensive. But yeah. uh, maybe less than divorce. Yeah. So that might be a healthier way to do it. Just keep getting engaged. You know, like in, in proposing to somebody, like it's almost like you have to have a feeling that they're going to say yes. I don't think people propose to people and feel like, yo, they, she might say no. That's not true. There's mad people that get engaged to like clear up a fuck up. Mm -hmm. like, that's the dumbest shit in the world. Yeah, that, that that's that's stupid. a terrible strategy. You're talking about stupid shit. Like if you trying to make up with somebody and that's your way of doing it, that's you just you swinging for the fences and nobody's yeah. even pitching. Like, 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 I'm serious. Fall for it. <laughs> what the the proposals? Yeah. When even when the relationship is rocky. Yeah, when he fucked up and oh he proposed to me he really does love me even though I caught him fucking that stripper in my apartment. But he proposed. So you don't he fuck strippers in your apartment. Oh, everybody knows you take them to the double tree. Yeah. yeah. The double <laughs> The hourly ones. 
Because they have great cookies at the Double Tree. They, they do. do. They have great yeah, really good turn cookies. down your room at night, leave a warm cookie. Yeah, stripper can leave with a dessert. Or a disease. Which yeah. <laughs> Giving a stripper a disease is fucking nuts. <laughs> if you, if you burn a stripper... somewhere. I know, but I thought there was born with it. Born with what? A disease? Yo. Some of them, I feel like, yeah. We are... <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah, don't I cancel love strippers. me. And I have the antibodies for chlamydia. I, Why? Just I, don't even don't even ask. Don't worry about it. I got the um, just let it go. I got the booster. <laughs> yeah, I got boosted yeah, with with uh, mm -hmm. what's the shit they give you when you get chlamydia? What's that shit called? Antibiotics. Clindamycin. Yeah, whatever yeah. that shit is. Who? Clindamycin. It's, a... it's an antibiotic. Yes. Clindamycin. Something like that. Nah, they get. It's been around forever. It's not morphine. What's the other no, shit? You're talking about that's <laughs> Yo, for gonorrhea. Yo, give us somebody morphine. Penicillin, thank you. That's for I'm thinking all the shit like from World War II. I don't know. Morphine is crazy. <laughs> Yo, give us somebody morphine because they have chlamydia. You know I'm how sorry. crazy that is? Do you know how much it burns? I could have used some fucking F morphine. Fam, morphine? I called my mother in tears. It burnt so much. Are I you, wanted some morphine. Oh, you had that. that. That means you was in there going, you must have had a week in a fucking no. nasty pussy. No, I know who... I was fucking one person at the time and I thought she was an angel. <laughs> she turned out to be the hot devil. <laughs> Yo. Burnt your little ass up. <laughs> Yo, come on. Uh, it was rough, bro. Yeah. It was real bad. Yo, getting burnt by a girl you think is an angel. Is... <laughs> still friends to this day. Love her to death. Oh. <laughs> she still denies that she gave it to me to this day. She can't deny that. To man. this day, we How are still deny, close friends. That's my people. How do you deny that you that you burnt somebody? She, I mean, she got on deep. She was iller than me when I said it. She was like, "Well, you fucking somebody else." I was like, "No, I'm only fucking you. I promise." <laughs> she flipped the shit on me immediately, and but I knew the truth. Yo, I knew I was only fucking her. Blaming each other for burning each other is crazy. So she thought that you burnt her. I, she had that's had, that. That has to be what she was saying. She, I know for a fact, she definitely went to the hospital and definitely came back positive. But she lied. She, she was said, like, "Oh, I don't have it." I'm like, I have it, and I only stuck my dick in you. <laughs> well, Rory, maybe it flared up. Like, you could have been had it, and then it flared up. Chlamydia don't flare up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes on rainy days, my chlamydia starts acting up. <laughs> Yo, I'm just thinking about standing in a room blaming each other for burning each other. It's fucking hilarious, bro. Nah, I'm only fucking you. I ain't got it. <laughs> what you mean? You ain't got I got it, and I'm only fucking you, so you got it. <laughs> And like this was this was uh, what oh nine oh eight or something. So this was so it wasn't years. like you couldn't like screenshot the test results on the the phone or the computer or whatever. Mm. So I'm like, yo, bring that paperwork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me see if you really don't have it. Word. Oh my god, that's when you was in college going nasty, nasty time. Uh, yeah, I think I was a fresh. It was the summertime though. Ooh, it, it definitely was summertime. It was hot in your drawers. <laughs> hot in your drawers too. Some summertime in uh in Newark. Isn't there pissing oatmeal? I don't know. Or East Orange. What the fuck, Mom? I'm just saying. He said he had he said it was burning, burning. Was, said, it was it yeah. was bad. That means you know what that means? That means ooh, she had it for a while. That shit was baking. <laughs> that means she had it. Ooh, she was running around. You know what it was? She probably was mad somebody gave it to her and was like, yo, you know what? All right. I mean, that's when I stopped using condoms at that point. Cause it was like, all right, if I'm gonna get burnt. I might as well just get burnt raw. Wait, you got burnt through a condom? I think so. I can't really remember. Man, I, I, he's not getting that off. I'm not letting you get that off. You, that you did from. not get burnt through no condom, I think bro. I did, stop. Though. Stop. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Because I was that. just so at that time when I was fucking her, she was the only person I was fucking. So we did the condom thing sometimes and the raw thing sometimes. But I think uh, I, she burnt you when you didn't have a condom. You not she's not burning through no rubble, bro. You have so much confidence in condoms, it's unbelievable. Bro, you, I never like, been you really and trust I, and I never had I never had I never had a, never had a, a chick pregnant. So well, that's because something you, works. Because you're corny. Because I never. Had <laughs> <laughs> Look why niggas is corny. You never, oh, you corny. I'm just saying it works for me. It works, bro. Mm -hmm. I never had COVID. Weed works. I smoke. They say it works. They say it helps. Listen, man. You I'm, never had COVID. You never had an STD. You never had a pregnancy scare. You live a terrible life. Shit. Yeah, like what the. I fuck? just. It's a simple. It's a simple fix. Put a fucking condom on. It's that simple. I don't I know why y'all making it seem like I'm some unicorn, but I just put a condom on. You have you've had sex in the Bronx. You before, can get what? Right? I'm not jacking that. That's another one I'm not jacking. When niggas be like, "Yo, she gave me, she gave me, she burnt me from giving me head." 
I'm not jacking. That can't happen. Because niggas be going raw. Niggas be going raw and don't want to say they be going raw and the chick that they know they shouldn't be going raw. And that's I, the bottom line. I have admitted it every time. No, I'm, <laughs> you, you don't give a fuck. But most dudes. I, I give a fuck. They don't want to say when it's like, yo, you hit that raw. They don't want to say that. How else was I supposed to hit it? What you? <laughs> God, God, man, what are you talking about? Put a fucking condom on. Gas we prices condom is crazy bag? right now. What? I don't know. Listen, man. Can we get a condom? I'm not, I'm not I rocking with that. I'm not rocking with you getting burnt from getting head. I'm, I'm she got chlamydia not, in the mouth? The, I'm not saying it's not possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm just tongue saying. tongue was burning? I, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's not possible. But come on, dog. Like a lot of dudes, y'all. They, we got to just be honest with each other. Dudes don't want to say when they just don't be wearing a condom, fucking these these girls, mm. or loving these girls. Madly in love. That's another story. Being madly in love with the rat is crazy. Been there. Hurts. <laughs> it's just, it burns. It stings. <laughs> yeah. Stings. Oh. It stings. <laughs> she was not that. Okay, I was. I'm talking about another girl. She was a rat. She no, she around. wasn't. He just still his friend. Okay. She was the rat. She may be I a reformed some, rat. Some she may, now she may be a mouse. Why I don't know. Why does she have to be a rat just because she caught an STD? You're STD shaming. I'm not STD shaming. I'm saying this was college. She's running around with a hot pussy. You know a lot of fucking is going She's on Running around with a hot pussy. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know college. Everybody fucking humping like rabbits. You know how that shit is. She wasn't even in college, though. Oh. So he was just just just, just stop, a stop just a North Broad. Was, stop telling mom <laughs> so then he went. So see what I'm saying? <laughs> so now he found a straggler that was walking by camp, but she, she didn't even go there. She was just is walking by. A very by. successful woman now. <laughs> he gets deeper and deeper. <laughs> All right, man. I, whoever your friend is, I'm. It's just jokes. I don't want to uh, uh, STD shame anybody, but that's just hilarious. She be doing. You know how they put ads on Instagram now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She be popping up in my algorithms because she's like does like some model shit for some one of them clothing brands that IG chicks wear. Uh-huh. I just open my phone and I just get reminded of chlamydia every time I go on Instagram. <laughs> like, get away from my algorithm. You never you never forgave her for that? For burning you? Uh, yeah, I think I did. You had sex with her after that? I did, yes. <laughs> this white boy is crazy. We both got chlamydia. I can't fuck anyone this else. Might as well, we this might as well fuck each other. Sick. Yo, if a girl burn me, we are never speaking again in life. Why? Oh my God. You oh, burn me? Crazy, yo, yo a girl burnt yo crazy. call a girl burn you. You still you still like you going back again? I mean, not I didn't a, know, right? Not a random though, huh? Nah, not a random. I'm to know if you know her and she burns you. You she gonna hit it again after that? I mean, with a condom. Like, he lying. Nah, <laughs> he nah. going back. I'll get up one Once you get the antibiotics, now I know for sure she's cleaning like a go raw. Exactly. We both got the. Yeah. You co the bikes. Like the yeah, Ma, I think you. I think your views on life are like very like you see through rose colored glasses, and it's kind of no. Like I see through. That's really deep. I don't like know what that means, that. but it sounded good. Just because a girl gets an STD doesn't make her dirty, doesn't make her a whore. It doesn't mean any of that. What does it mean? You've definitely slept with a woman that has had an STD, STD. before. Yes. Sure. Yeah, but a condom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Probably. A lot of people don't. You have to be careful. A lot of people don't know that they have STDs. But see, you wear a condom because oh, I knew. You wear condoms. <laughs> I fucking knew. But but guys, I was in that bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done, man. I can't do this. I can't do this with y'all. I'm I was squ- I was doing a, I was uh, dancing uh, when I was pissing. Oh, you, you hit some <laughs> Rory thought he had. You thought you had. I was Shakira stones? in there. You thought you had kidney stones. You thought you saw no. the kidney stone. Nah, I was just straight. It was flake flakes and that shit too when I was oh, in the toilet. Like, that shit was bad, bro. <laughs> what she gay this nigga? What she gay this nigga? Listen, man, that shit. That shit was rough. We getting flashbacks. Oh, flakes, what he had? <laughs> Pissing flakes. Is, it, was it was snowing. I walked I, after I left the hospital. I went uh, to my man's crib in Concourse Village. Look walk, where you go after you leave. <laughs> Yo, I see how you got burned. Look where you hanging out at Concourse Village. All right, go ahead. I walked into his crib. Him and his cousin just start going. I said, what are y'all doing? He said, we clapping. You got to clap. Yo, <laughs> That's why you can't tell niggas shit like that because they're going to make fun of shit like I that. I went to like confide with them. Yeah, no, 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 no. They did the right thing. That's what yeah, friends are supposed to do. Give me a round of applause when I walked in. Oh, no, you clapped up. Part of manhood. Clapped up, clapped up, yeah. clapped up. Standing ovation. Oh, my God. That's some sick shit. And they just kept offering me water for the next three days. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want anything to drink. And cranberry juice? Cranberry juice probably would have helped you. Yo, Carl, you didn't go to Last Lab? I didn't see you there. Uh... Me and Peach went Bob. I thought it was closed. I'm like, that shit open? So we just... That shit was packed. Yeah. Mm. So we just left. I thought I would have saw you for sure in there pop locking, bro. 
Yeah, nah, I should have. I seen, I seen on Demar's story. I'm like, damn, well, I guess you missed something. Eddie, you wasn't there. Where you went? Eddie was for insane for me. Oh. <laughs> so, guys, have you subscribed to our Patreon? Oh, our yeah. Patreon is up, is running. Uh, first episode is out, right? Correct? Yes, first bonus episode <laughs> and the first sketch. Yeah, man, we're going to have some fun with this Patreon shit. I'm excited. We can be as silly and as fucking crazy as we want to be. Get Even back. though we do that on the pod as well. But. Back on our sketch shit. Yeah. For our listeners who might not have seen the announcement, um, Rory and Maul now have a Patreon. Um, with three tiers. There's a $5 tier, a $10 tier, and a $20 tier. Um, and you'll be getting, for the $20 tier, you get everything. You get the two bonus episodes a month, and you get a sketch. And you're also invited into the new Rory and Maul. Get your shit off, D. The new Rory and Maul close friends. So I'll be posting, uh, you know, just little things that are in our close friends for our page that our friends are in. I'll be posting that on the Patreon. So you'll see Rory saying some nasty shit like he was at last lap. Mm -hmm. I'll be on the, on, on the Discord. I'll be on the cord going crazy. On the Discord, yep. There's a Discord, yes. It's going to be fun. I'll even get more on the cord. Yeah, I like I like Discord. I haven't been on it in a while. I like Discord. And I like Reddit. I have fun on the Reddit, uh, the Q&A. Yeah, shout out to the Reddit guys. Yeah, they was cool. The I ones that was, like and hate us. Yeah, I, pre I, I appreciate I, I all I thought I was going to get more hate mail, but it was pretty cool. I mean, I had some hate in there, but I like the hate too. Because then once you have a conversation with somebody that says some hateful shit to you online, you realize at the end of it, they be like, oh, I like him. He's a cool guy. That's usually how it goes. Yeah, it's like, fam, you don't even know why you don't like me. You just want to say crazy shit mm. over the internet. But. Bro, I was just kidding, man. I was just kidding. I was just trying to get reaction. Yeah, it's all good. But yes, uh, and I thank you to everyone that has uh, subscribed so far to the we Patreon. Appreciate we appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, man, we're going to have some fucking fun with this shit. And the link to the Patreon, for those of you who have not signed up yet, it will be in the description box of all the streaming services as well as YouTube. So, Look at Damaris doing her job. Such a great job Damaris is doing. I like Damaris, it. I think I might give you a raise. $50. Don't worry about it. It adds up. Small things. Uh, hey, if you want to smack him, I won't yeah, say man, anything. Was, Why? <laughs> like... <laughs> You just want to clean so clock and raise. Listen, Ma got his Let's give her a raise, man. Tripping. Let's give Damaris a raise. I love Damaris. She gonna come right up the side of your noggin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hit him where it hurt. That have been pocket. So oh, I got see? all the passwords see? and all the codes. I ain't worried about shit. And I the give, card. I give myself a goddamn. I give myself a raise. The fuck. <laughs> got the exit strategy ready? Oh yeah, man. I can't talk about. Uh, what else happened? Any music coming out? Any music? I said music. Any music? I can't talk to either. Music? Any music coming out? Uh, I would like to ask you guys, who do you think is the next superstar in R and B? Who do you think? Who do you think has the crown coming to them? The, the crown coming to them. Don't, don't tell me who has the crown coming to them. Uh, define superstar. Here we go. Yeah, superstar of R and B. Damn, I don't know, man. Because I with R and B now is so. Oh, it's just different. Diverse. Like, yeah. There's so many artists. There's so much to listen to. You know what I would like to see in R&B come back? I would like to see like the boy band come back. We, weren't we talking about that? I believe we did. With Pink or something. Off yeah. mic, we were saying, hey, we... I would like to see the boy bands come back. I would like to see somebody put together, not not Puff. I was going to say, we could do Making the Band no. 5. I would like to see somebody uh, put together a group of, of guys and that can really sing and really mm. dance and... I would like to see that. I think that I think that R and B needs a a, a boy, a, a male group. I don't have that. Anymore. I can see you taking that role of uh, putting together a male group. Yeah, that, could. that could be a good Patreon <clears throat> episode. Let's do audition. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. But I think I could do it though. I don't want to just limit it limit it to like New York though. Mm. Like you know, especially with the internet now, you have access to so many different artists across the world. I think that would be dope though. I don't know why the, the industry doesn't do more of that. Why is there's no male groups anymore? Or I mean, even female groups, but... Groups are tough. Why would I be in a group when I got to deal with other people and split my money? Well, because there's more money to make now, right? So, I mean, everyone's making more money because there's more money to make. There's different ways to make money now around music. But I just think that just aesthetically sound, playing with... Uh, with uh, melodies and, and you know, dance and choreography. I just think mm. that that always looks good on stage. Like, when was the last time you saw a male artist dance? Shit, when was the last time you seen a female artist dance outside of clothes? Carl. I just seen Carl dance at SOBs. <laughs> Carl's not a female artist, but okay. Well, she said male first. Oh, okay. Um, there's a lot of female artists that dance. Who? Who didn't? What's her name? Uh, Tiana. Tiana Taylor for sure. Mm -hmm. Her shows, her, her live shows. No, Normani. Normani dance, she paints in thongs. Normani is a pop artist. She's not an R&B artist. 
Yeah, but you know they they skew that they she can She's sing. She's a pop R- artist. The only reason why she will ever be labeled as R and B is because people try to put all our black pop artists as R and B artists because they don't want to share the pop awards. Well, Nomani can sing, so if you give her a ballad, I'm sing, pretty sure she can artist. kill it's that like, shit. Like Doja's a pop artist, pop rap artist, and they keep trying to make her R and B. So you talking R&B. about like straight pure R and B? I'm talking about R and B. I'm talking about the singers. So yeah, Wait, Normani could on this album. We don't know that. She might get an R and B bag. She's maturing. I like Normani a lot. Yeah, she's dope. I think she's uh, Shinsea. Will she be R&B? No. Oh, they're no. going to make her pop as well. She's going to be Caribbean pop. Caribbean pop is a thing? Mm. Yeah, for sure. That's a genre? Have you never heard Drake? Dra- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to let you do that to Drake. That's my nigga. Like, you're not going to call Drake a Caribbean pop artist. Like, we're not doing that. We're not calling Drake a Caribbean pop artist. Not on my platform. I can't do that. I can't allow that. He Caribbean lit- pop is crazy to call Drake a Caribbean pop artist. He literally said, pop on your bumper, sit on upon this on a pop song. <laughs> <laughs> That's one record, bro. Like, we're not doing that. He said, what were you? <laughs> said, sit, sit upon this. <laughs> I'll be forgetting where we be hanging out in the West Indian neighborhoods, man. Of course, man. <laughs> sit upon <pond> this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, tell her the chick to sit pond this. Yeah, what you doing? What you doing? What? Sit pond this. <laughs> uh, see, Mo, you, yours wasn't bad, actually. I grew up uptown around nothing but West Indian Dominican. People think I'm Dominican when I go uptown. Either. What? I start. I walk in the store. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying, man. Hey, puppy. That, they don't, That's what they say. They don't say I poppy. I don't say I poppy as soon as I walk in the store. <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with the marriage? You think they just yell I poppy when I walk in the store? Maybe. Maybe you got it like that. No, I don't have it like that. I promise you, I do not have it like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, we need some more. We need some more groups in R and B, man. We need a we need a male group and a female group. R and B, not pop, straight mm. R and B. We need that. I don't see it. One Direction. All right. Um, <laughs> are they still together? I don't think so. I f- but the groups, they never. They usually just pick one person, do two albums, and then the other person goes solo. Like, where are the rest of the Pussycat Dolls? Yeah, they... I take that back. I follow one of them on Instagram. You do? She has a, a very cute daughter. Um, That's why you follow her? No, she was a mutual friend. I forgot. It was like early Instagram days. I actually didn't even realize she was in the Pussycat Dolls till like three years into the follow. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. So she, she's not promoting that? Any of that? <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's moved on. Okay. And what was the lead singer on the Pussycat Dolls? Nicole Scherzinger. Nicole Scherzinger. What happened to her? Uh, she was she put her? out a couple records solo. She had a, a solo stint. I think I don't. Know, I believe she had married. Okay. I want to say I'm, I could be wrong. Somebody fact check that. Recently, I'm, one of her songs with remember that song she did with Diddy. It went like viral. Like the TikTok kids are like discovering old songs that like came out when we were in like middle school and high yeah. school. And it's like disgusting. making them hits and making them chart again. It's so fucking, and doing dances to them. It's so fucking weird. I'm sure this, the DSPs are happy about that. I'm sure whoever owns their catalog is exactly. ecstatic. Exactly. Um, yeah, she, I don't know. She. Where's Fergie at? <laughs> Fergie's another one, I think that. Fergie, she's after the national she's anthem, it was over for her. Oh, they canceled her after that? You think so? I ain't hear it from her since. They canceled Fergie? After the national anthem? What she did? She did it like Macy Gray? Yeah, nah, no, nobody could nobody no. could do it like Macy. Macy's rendition of the national anthem is one for the record books. Nobody will ever she outdo left Black that. Black Eyed Peas, and then like I don't know what happened to her. Other than he left Black Eyed Peas, so Nicole Scherzinger was like easily one of the baddest women on the planet for like six years straight. What's the um? I forgot what was it Letterman, Nicki Minaj, and Will I Am performing one of their records on one of those talk shows is quite possibly the funniest. TV performance I've ever seen in my life. And Safari dancing in the background. S- Safari. That was Carl dancing. That wasn't Safari. Yeah, Safari was, is in the background that for was literally. Carl. You know how long two minutes is? Yeah. He is sitting like this for two minutes, <laughs> waiting for his time. And then he like does a Carl move to get to the front. And then it's just Safari in a t shirt and a fitted dancing with Will I Am and Nicki Minaj. It's quite possibly the greatest thing I've ever seen. People don't give Safari enough credit, man. Or for just being Safari. I mean, he's definitely played the hand he was dealt, and there's some longevity, man. I, I can't be mad at him. All right, that's all I was looking for. Like, I'm not gotta, a safari hater. No, no, no. I know you're not a safari hater. I'm just saying, like, we don't give him enough credit. Like, yo, dude, like, he he was around some, around some like monumental shit. 
For sure. He had a hand on some monumental records and some 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 big career moves and stuff like that. And he was able to pivot and kind of do his own thing. Even his OnlyFans career was he was the OnlyFans <laughs> star during the quarantine, apparently. I, I wasn't aware. I mean, yeah, the ladies was talking about him on online and you know. No, I don't even think he had an OnlyFans. His nudes just leaked. No, he had he definitely he had leaked him and Eric. Him and Erica have OnlyFans. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I remember before that his nudes leaked, which is why we wanted him to Because we spoke OnlyFans. to him and he was telling, he was alluding to how much money he was making on OnlyFans. He mm. was like, yo, y- y'all would not believe how much money I'm making. I will believe it. Yeah. You, you, sus- you subscribe to his no, OnlyFans? No, I didn't, I didn't subscribe. Oh, you, but I've seen you got the bootleg. nudes when they leak. Oh, you got so. the bootleg. Okay. You don't support his family. Okay. Well, Maul was saying if our Patreon goes to shit, he'll just put his sex tapes on there. Yeah, if it's looking like, you know what I mean? I don't want to see no condom sex. Ain't nobody paying twenty dollars a fucking month. For if I yeah, if sex. I'm paying for our OnlyFans and you fucking on there with a condom, like, dog, give me my give me my ten dollars yeah. back. No fucking. Why way. we don't like condom sex? <laughs> we know we go. that's we a had thing. This that's a already. thing. No, that's the thing. Like niggas don't watch like porn with like condoms. Yeah, no. I see a porn. He got he went a, con- a condom and porn. I, I'm like, come on, fam. Don't disrespect. Take me a risk. That. No, they get <laughs> tested. Regularly doing porn. Porn stars wearing condoms is the funniest thing in the world. That's why. I, that's why I don't watch it. Cause I'm like, yeah, y'all get tested like the day before y'all have to shoot this shit. Like, and y'all all have herpes anyway. So is that true? Yeah. All porn stars have herpes. A good, like, I think I read a report. It was like 75. Yo, Jada, do all of y'all have herpes? <laughs> don't like 75 percent of the world have herpes. No, Fam, <laughs> Yo, we just be talking. <laughs> Yo, our numbers. Get, I, get, I get chlamydia one time. Now I know all Yo, the percentages. Get, now the whole world got it. Well, oh, fuck it. The whole world got it anyway. I feel like the herpes stat is kind of crazy though. I don't seventy five percent. No, of the I world think, but it's like one in three people or some. It's some crazy stat like that. Oh, so one, That's two, oral, three, yeah, four. Oral herpes. I was talking about uh, sex, like I was talking about herpes too, but uh, fifty to eighty percent of a, a U.S. adults have oral herpes. Yes. 50 to 80 is a big gap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah How you go from say, half to 80%? 50 to 80? Like, who's... <laughs> that number is globally, not... Globally, an estimated two-thirds of the population under 50. And what about the other, the sexual herpes? Uh, it's a, a, lo- a, lo- a lower number. It's okay. high, but it's a much lower number. Overall, gotcha. apparently, one in five people have an STD. Mm-hmm. Have or had? Have. Currently, like, at the moment. So in here. So in here, like, one, one, two, one of us three, got four, an STD yeah. right now. <laughs> I'm Listen, not jacking that. Mine was in 09, so that's on y'all now. So you don't want? No. Nah. <laughs> the probable cause. I, yeah. I already took the antibiotics. I don't got it. It's, it's one of y'all. Oh, yeah. You believe in the antibiotics. Yeah. Everyone got real quiet when I admitted I got burnt. I never had an STD. And we know you've never done anything. <laughs> yeah. It was... <laughs> I mean, listen, bro. Strap up. Unless, you know, I'm fucking with you like that. Carl, I've been on the road with you, man. Come on. Oh, no, I have. I know you, man. Call like, yo, are you kidding me? Yeah, my shit cool. just stopped leaking like two days ago. Yo. <laughs> Call like me? Come yo. on, fam. Like, Come on, you know, you you know me. You know how I give it up. Yeah. My shit just stopped leaking. <laughs> Eddie, you laughing? I know you had one. Nope. Ooh. Look, see, Edit. Edit ain't lying. Edit ain't got no check. STDs. Come on, check. look at Edit. You, you know you got to test to get into the stumble. Yeah, <laughs> you got to test first. <laughs> Edit is doing the test. You go when you go. No, here's my COVID <laughs> test. No, no, no. We're not asking for that yeah. test. Turn around. Let me see over. a city MD <laughs> test. <laughs> Yo, oh, tested STD testing people to get into a fucking bar. Yo, <laughs> it's y- nasty as fuck. You know what kind of is one of, one of my fears of this this podcast. And I'm so happy that when I do go outside, people acknowledge how they, they like it and all that. And it's all supportive and shit. Yeah. When I, because I do get STD tests. Mm-hmm. I think anyone that's fucking should do Absolutely. that as often as they can. Absolutely. Good for your nurse going to be a fan. I've sat plenty of times where I've gotten like the, you know, like that double look. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you have like all down to my social security number on your screen right now. Yeah. Like, what if I come up with some shit one time? <laughs> You know they sending that shit that to the shit blogs. Be on Reddit. <laughs> For sure. Reddit definitely gonna They sending that going. right to the blogs. Yeah, it, it it makes me nervous a little bit. Yeah. You gotta and I just be going at any city MD. Like and I don't even go to a primary care doctor for that. Be young now. When I was going to get my COVID test, I'm like, these people are like my age. They look young. Yeah, and they talk to you like they're they're young too. Like, all right, how many people you been fucking? <laughs> like, no, it's how many sexual partners, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know how they they Sometimes, depending on, on which nurse or person you get, they'll ask you like real detailed questions and shit. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't want a fan asking me, so just men or just women, what is it with you? 
Well, they have to ask that now. <laughs> Look, fam. Don't ask me that if you listen to this pod. No, but not not, <laughs> not if they listen to the pod, but I think that that's just part of protocol because they don't want to just assume that you're heterosexual or, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I yeah, I don't come off, I think, as the straightest, so it's fine. I get it. Uh, you're a little peppy instead. I know. You saw the way Damaris moved her shoulders when she said that? She said, you got a little... You know, I'm a little, that's how, little, that's how Rory little zest through. to him. <laughs> you can't say, can we say zest? I don't feel like, I feel like we can't say zest. You What's wrong with zest? zest? You can say zest. That's not offensive. Zest is just zest? flavor. Zest yeah, zest it's a little seasoning on. A little seasoning on your walk. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, but fuck it, zest. You know, your, 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 your step's a little zesty today. <laughs> I love that word, but I just thought we had to get rid of it. I thought yeah. it was offensive. You looking real zest fest zesty today. Is not. Can we still say sugar in the tank? I don't think so. Cause I that think was, you can still say sugar in the that's tank. That's such an old auntie term. <laughs> I love it though. I love it though. He got a little, a little sugar, sugar in his tank. I love that. It's a nice way to say things. Because <laughs> who put sugar in the tank? <laughs> if you put sugar in your tank, your car stops. And sugar is great. <laughs> Yo, sugar is not great, word. Sugar is terrible. Yo. It tastes good. We are so fucking fucked up What's as people that? in society. I cannot believe Moss said sugar in the tank. He is such an old Yo, ass. that was the <laughs> shit though. Like, Yo, he, that boy got a little sugar in his tank. <laughs> I was like, what did that mean? Like I want some sugar in my it, tank. It like, means you know, it means you know when you're a kid you hit a don't say name like I, I want some sugar like nah you don't want that type of sugar. It means you was playing ball he was jumping rope that's what it means. He a little too good at double dutch. I feel like I feel like we can't say this. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you man. Think I think we a, yeah like we line. walk in the line like I don't nah, think we can man. say that. <laughs> All right yeah I was playing ball he was jumping rope. And, listen jumping rope is great. Great workout, great cardio. For sure. For sure. Maybe he'll be a boxer. Yeah, what's some of the things that your mom or dad used to tell you like when like an ass whooping was on the way? Uh, they got quiet. That's, That's I, I know what time it, I know what time it was there. When, when they got no quiet, talking? it was like, all right, it's about to go down. See that's see that's the difference in our culture and your culture. Well, no, there's there's yelling, and then when the yelling subsides, but what's some I'm, of the yelling? Like, what, what are some of the things that are being said? Specific to whatever I did wrong, and then I'm dumb. See, my mom, <laughs> my, my mom's favorite thing was get over here before I kill you. Damn, mom. Yeah. Oh, I'm still here though, so I got over there. I went. <laughs> oh, I went, Rory. But Every I gotta time. go for you to kill me. Yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> Talk about some mental gymnastics yeah, there. Wait, yeah, hold on. If I go there, but if I leave, you can't kill me. Get over here before I kill you. Every black mother has said that at one point. Get over here before I kill you. Just think about that. See, my mother wasn't like that. My mother was the purse your lips and said, get yours. And then she didn't. Oh, no, that was part of it. Get over here before I kill you. And it was everything was right through the teeth. That's because you was fucking singing Cameron sucking or not in the backseat. Yeah. (laughs) You deserved it. (laughs) You definitely deserved that. Singing sucking or not. I was actually a very good kid. So. Yeah, I could tell. I could tell you you were a good kid. I don't know if that's true. When did you start becoming a a bad kid? Uh, I never was a bad kid. Shh. I swear to God, I was like a I was like a role model child. Like I was a nerd. I read. I, and then what happened? Nerds are bad though. Wow. No. I was sneak. I did sneaky shit when I was when I got to like high school and shit. Like I was sneaky, but my grades were always good. I was always well behaved. That's was, what like, kids hide behind. When you got good grades, you can get yeah, away with anything. I get away with anything. My grades are good. That's really the key to like childhood. Like I you just that. do good in school. Yeah. You I, do good in school, pass all your classes. You can get away with almost anything. I I got away with. I remember one time I was in high school and I came to third block. I came. I skipped the first three blocks. I came there by like third, fourth block, and I had a hickey on my neck. I was like sixteen, seventeen, and my teacher you called my slug. mother. You got a hickey in between classes? <laughs> no, I never went. I, I was I, <laughs> I was doing shit I had no business doing. I was gonna say this guy is a fucking animal. And How you get a hickey but in three minutes? Making up, making out with a guy in the morning time. Right, I skipped like my first three blocks. And brush your both you brush your teeth first, I hope. Yeah, in the morning. Making out in the morning uh, is kinda nice. It's fucking crazy. Well, we were in high school. We like got dressed like we were going to school and okay. just didn't go to school. But the teacher called my mom. Did y'all set it up like the night before on the phone? Mm-hmm. Teacher, oh, so. teacher called my mom and told her I had a hickey on my neck and I came to school late. Damn. And what happened? All that just to make out. I know. Right? <laughs> Dumbass kid. Making out. I told is... her I got hit with I like a snowball because I bruise easily. Hmm. It was what was it, May? You got that off? She believed that? <laughs> no, my mother didn't believe it, but my father wanted to believe it, so he just told her to let it run. Yeah, because fathers never want to believe my daughter's letting some dirty guy suck on her neck. Mm-hmm. What if he was... all kids are dirty. What if he was the valedictorian? What if he was oh, a no, really he was nice dirty. guy? He was dirty. Yeah. He wasn't a valedictorian. Yeah, I forgot. Because if you if you know how to give girls hickeys at a yeah. young age, that means you've been through a few necks. Hickeys are weird. 
Hickeys are stupid. What, what is the Bro, point? You look like you're prone to hickeys. You could do this to my neck and it'll show up. <laughs> so yeah. I, <laughs> nothing about hickeys was even cool to me. Hickeys was always stupid. They don't feel good. They hurt. Hickeys was always stupid to me. Like, and then I always, always. I always felt like, because they did hurt, but I didn't want to sound pussy. So like I'd, keep, I'd let her keep biting and That's nibbling at my true. neck. Like, I just said, can Rory, you stop? Rory was laying down. She biting on his neck, his toes and his socks like this. <laughs> but not in a good way. <laughs> he ain't want to tell her to stop. How do you think I developed this, this shit? <laughs> you this got is, ballet this toes. This is PTSD from now Hickeys. Now you got ballet toes because he was getting Hickeys. <laughs> Ma, you look like you used to give Hickey. Give Hickey? He nah. looked like he still do. Nah, I was never that guy. I was never that guy. Yeah, right. I'll keep going. I don't like, I, I was never the Hickey giver. I'm not going to suck on your neck. And... You see me, you're too cool to, to suck on his neck. I suck on, I, I was, I like titties, man. When yeah, I was young, I was. Salty neck? Of oh, course. That's, uh, I, that was, I that's why I stopped. So, yes. I think the first time I started like licking on a girl's neck, I think it was like we was outside running around. You know, you're young and dirty. You know how that kids, you got to get it in when you can. Because once it's time yeah, to go home, that's it. Yeah. We was taught sexual uh, soul at a really young age. Mm-hmm. Playing house, <laughs> playing hide and go get. Because we was horny. Yeah. You seventh Heaven. Horny, seventh Heaven is the is, is legend. I want to play adult Seventh Heaven. Like going to the closet with a girl for like seven minutes. I mean, you just fly, just go to a resort. That's what happens. That's the adult version nah, of that. Nah, man. I'm talking about like... Right now, give each other a look, and then we go in this little cubby hole right here. I feel like seventh if we go heaven. To the stumble, and we can definitely do a seventh heaven. I'm game. not doing no seventh heaven with nobody in the stumble. In I'm sorry. You want to play spin the bottle? No. Buy bottles and then spin them. No. Yo, you used to you used to get mad and spin the bottle if the girl you like spun the bottle and she had to kiss your, your man. I still hold resentment to this day. <laughs> Yo, as kids, I, I'm, I'm resenting the, the fates. Up, yo, we set ourselves up for trauma as kids. Ooh. Like, look at the games we play. You gonna sit in the circle with your homeboys and girls y'all like, and spin a bottle, and somebody got to kiss somebody. And then when she spin the bottle and it land on your man's, and she gives a little smirk, like she happy. <laughs> but what about Crushed. when it land? What about when it land in between you and your man? Like, who takes it? Because <laughs> like, you know that was the thing. Like, nah, it's on me. Depends who the girl was. Yeah, that's exactly smart, man. Depends who the girl is. I don't want to kiss her. You got that, fam. <laughs> take one, take, take that one. These days, you can play games like that. No, they fucking. They're sending. They're sending nudes. At yeah, no, nah, these 13. kids now, yeah, they're yeah, fucking. Shit. They're straight. It ain't. They don't even know what seventh heaven is no more. That was our fucking like kissing, you know, grab a titty, finger bang a little bit. To us, that was a successful night. We was like, oh my god, I just had sex. Like <laughs> now, no, they're they're going all the way at twelve years old. Like they're going all the way. It's crazy. I, I'm becoming my parents in that regard. Absolutely. I see like, kids running. These running little fast ass, this new generation. <laughs> fast ass kids. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's That's different. That's what they are. Because like, I've, I've talked to my younger cousins. People be having threesomes in high school. I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. hold on. How is that in high school? Yeah. In No, in the high school. Not 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 there in well, high school. Well, if you didn't school. fuck in your high school, then you're a fucking loser. But, but having a threesome no, in that's, school? No, that's insane. Damn. In the school is crazy. You never fucked in your high school? Oh, you went to all boys, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you didn't. Not that I care about your preference. I just know you have a girlfriend and <laughs> she may that. be. Yo, we can't say that. Y'all can't. We cannot say that. We have to clear that. We have to cut that. <laughs> well, because, I hope you did. Like, because what? Cardinal Hayes is Catholic school. I just didn't, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, man. Is hip-hop and music media still a male-dominated arena or are women moving to the forefront? Who asked this question? Is this you, Damaris? Wait, that's not... That's in our notes? I swear to God. Is hip-hop and music media still a male-dominated arena or are women moving to the forefront? That wasn't so supposed to be. To ask that question, um, unfortunately, it is still male-dominated. But a lot of... uh, Female artist. I'm not talking about artists. I'm talking about the media game. Damaris leading the charge. I am not leading a fucking. Is hip hop and music media still a male dominated? Oh, yeah, it's still male dominated. Yeah, it is. Now I understand the question. The media part. Okay. Yeah, oh, of I, I think so. Obviously, the artist. Is, of course. Yeah, I think it's still a male dom. I think that there's a there's By a percentage though, but I feel like going to Angie was the number one thing ever. Oh, of course. You had, so, to, like, you had to go sit down with Angie Martinez. Percentage, yes. But I think Angie was the number one person you would want to go sit and talk to. Yeah. Because, well, because of her, uh, obviously, her, her her legendary career in radio, um, she's one of the voices and one of the people that 
you know, if you're an aspiring artist, you definitely want to sit down at some point, especially if you're a hip hop artist, you want to sit down and, and talk to Angie Martinez if you come to New York City. Or if you were just uh, robbed at your building. Yeah. That's a, that's a safari callback. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely want to. In the uh, business, we call that a callback. <laughs> In the bit, don't look at me. In the business, <laughs> in, the, in the biz, we call that in a call the business. Back. We call that a callback. Uh, yeah, it definitely is a still um, a male dominated arena for I sure. I feel like in a lot of and I, I'm, when I say in and media, I like women that know about hip hop. Like yeah. when women can sit down and have a a real in depth conversation about hip hop and music. Like I think that that's like super fly. But I think a lot of women are running a lot of these artists, and that's what I meant by that too. Like they're running them. Of, like not running in a bad way. I mean, like as far as managers, you're seeing a lot of more women managers. Uh, PR. Well, because women know how to get shit done. Women are very organized. Women know how to, you know, keep things together. Uh, not saying that men can't, but women just have a more natural way of organizing and keeping shit. It's also an ego thing. Men have a lot of ego, especially in the hip hop industry. So I feel like when women are having in these meetings and trying to get shit done and trying to get this person to work with this person, I think it might be a little bit easier to facilitate when you're not dealing with men's fucking egos. I love working with women. That's my preference. Yeah, I, I love... Me, I'm the total opposite. Like, I love working with women. For me, that's my preference. I like having women that know... You just know what they're doing and educated, smart. They could teach me some shit. Uh, they stay on my ass about shit. Um, I just... Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not... I have. I don't understand when guys don't have women that they work with. That to me is weird. Super. It's a perspective you could never have, and yeah. you need it in the room. Yeah. Like I just don't understand that. Like how men don't want to work with women. Like in uh, entertainment. Like <clears throat> at the end of the day, if the women are pleased, the men are gonna follow. Absolutely. Even even down to like what we see with female rappers. Like I love Cardi and Megan and all of them. Not because they're rapping about shit that I particularly want to hear or rap along to, mm -hmm. but it gets the women. Yeah. And I like when women are happy around me and they get happy when that shit comes up. So you're going to get, if you get the women, you'll get everyone else. Yeah. Uh, king Vaughn's posthumous album is released tonight, What It Means to Be King. Uh, the track list was released, right, Damaris? Yeah. Um, so, so far I'm seeing there's a G Herbo feature, a 21 Savage feature, Fabio, Moneybag Yo, of course, Lil Dirk. Polo G, A Boogie with the Hoodie, Dreezy. Uh Dreezy, okay. Love yeah. Dreezy. So there's 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 some people on there. Did did someone specific put it together? How how did this where was this an album that Vaughn already kinda had done? I think it was a you know, a bunch of music that was already done. Okay. Oh I, I mean I hope I hope somebody definitely really put it together rather than just took a bunch of songs that Vaughn was working on. But Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm excited to hear it. Uh, just despite Vaughn not being here, which sucks, but he did make great music. Yeah, he did. I think he was one of the younger artists that was just finding his uh his voice mm. and his style and his pocket. And you know, unfortunately, he was taken from us way, way too soon, as we've seen and continue to see in our culture way too often. Um, yeah. but yeah, what it means to be king available now. Um, and again, prayers to Vaughn and his family. For sure, for sure, and I, and I hope. I hope the profits from that go directly to his family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anyone else coming out, Demers? Uh, the Cool Kids before shit got weird. I love I love that album title. Yeah, I do. Yeah, too. I do too. So apparently, it's going to be a twenty one hour long three part album. Oh right. what? I had like I got I have work to do. Well, it's gonna be, <laughs> I have, it's I have it's a gonna family. Be three parts. I don't think they're releasing all, all okay. three parts at all the right. same then time. Then that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Well, listen, man. Chuck English to me is a fucking amazing producer so i'm sure it's put together in a very good way i fuck with the cool kids they they was part of that blog era in 09 where mm -hmm. you know even though they both had great careers after that i thought they was like on that next up mm -hmm. wave at that time this was the joint Maul, you you're not a hipster so you was you wouldn't listen to this shit but in 09 we was going crazy to this I with, with this. our g-shocks on i remember this and i don't even think either of the names are mikey And don't ever be around a Mikey when this came on. Definitely the backpack <laughs> era. Look at the sound. This is very Pharrellish, though. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I fuck with the cool kids, man. I definitely remember this. This was a joint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, shout out to Chuck English, man. Um, all right, well, 
I'll try to get around to the 21 hours of it. It's, it's not coming. <laughs> yeah, but they're releasing it like yeah. capsules. You know, mm. I get it. I'm oh, not God. mad at that. This world, we, we love the word <laughs> capsule now, don't we? No, you released a t-shirt. <laughs> The Don't tell are, me it's a capsule. The bundle is over with? Is the bundles over with? The bundle yeah, pack? They, they, it's they, over with? They got that out of here. Mm. I'm kind of happy they got that out of here, though. Yeah, because niggas was definitely trying to trick the, the system Good. with that. I'm not mad at it, but I'm glad they got it out of here because mm. it's kind of like, let's try to get as back to normal with these record streams or sales, whatever you want to call it, as mm. possible. Let's, I understand, you know, trying to find loopholes in the system, but we got to find some... Some type of way to be like, all right, fam, just sell the album, sell the music. Listen, man, go back to the old days where you have to buy 10,000 copies of your own album. Or that. You know what I mean? But I wasn't with that bundle of shit. Yeah, I wasn't with that bundle of shit. Remember, remember when rappers was doing that and labels were doing that? Absolutely. Literally buying their albums? For sure. You go right to the office, they're sitting right there in the, in the box. Uh, movies were doing it too. Just buying movie tickets. Really? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I remember at one time they were telling you to check your ticket stubs to make sure that they were giving you the right ticket stuff for the movie because it was some something around, was it, I think it may have been around the Black Panther time when Black Panther came out. Mm -hmm. And um, they were saying, make sure you check the ticket stub because it's on pace to set a record and, you know, they might try to stop the record from being set and give people the tickets to the wrong show or the wrong uh, movie. Uh, I see what you're saying. I was like, who has time to do this at the theater? Yeah, like, who the fuck is behind all of the stupid shit? Wait, hold on. We started this pod with fucking Biden saying he's, oh man, I see entrapment right in front of my face. What happened? Dear borrower, by the way, don't call me borrower. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is from the U.S. Small Business Administration. One hour ago. Dear borrower, you may be eligible for an increase for your loan amount based on the information submitted with the original SBA COVID uh, economic injury disaster loan, whatever that's the EDIL shit. Mm-hmm. You trying to set me up when Biden said he's going to send the goons into my house? Yeah, they, they trying to throw it on you. That's somebody trying to, trying to throw it you on you. You want me to buy more weight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a PPP? No, I didn't get a PPP. Oh. I got a small business loan. SBA. It's different. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Biden, forgive that shit, man. Yeah, right. You're going to have to pay. It's the lowest interest rate ever. That's why I took it. Well, then that's not bad. Yeah. No, it was, that's not bad. And I used it for to make money. So, Listen, man, they're not playing. They coming for that money. They want it back. But how are you gonna how are you gonna put that on your speech and then email me, yo, you want some more? <laughs> no. <laughs> you fucking crazy. They only that's why they ain't coming for you. You must be paying. Uh no, they haven't asked for their money back yet. Really? They're they're debating not yet. now. Well, no, they're they're not sure yet if Biden's gonna forgive it. Some SBA yeah. loans they won't they may forgive. He ain't forgiving nothing, man. That's probably true. <laughs> he ain't forgive student. Nah, loans. go he get go get the, the fraud loans. shit. Maybe get your money back up and leave me the fuck alone. Listen, either way, they 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 coming for that money back. They want it back in full. In blood? So I don't understand Biden's why, getting it back in blood? I, I, <laughs> pretty much. I don't understand how people think that they can get away with, like, you can't scam the government, bro. Yes, you can. You can. People do it all the time. And they get caught all the you time. No, but you don't, uh, there's a big chance you might not get caught. No, he it's not. He, they're not going to catch everybody that did PPP loans. They're not going to catch everybody who did unemployment scams. They're not going to catch. Not, not everybody, but the ones that. That dragged it, sure. This, that's what I'm saying. They but not you got you know, a quick little four thousand from. Nah, they not trip. They not really tripping yeah. about that. They gonna, but they gonna get that back too. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. F- Ten years from now, when you try to file taxes and think you getting your income tax back, I'm like, yo, remember um, 2020 when you was going crazy? Well, yeah, we decided to take that back. Well, that's because everyone wanted to go Frank Lucas with this shit, and they got their PPP loan, and then went on Instagram and bought a Lamborghini. Yeah, they was dragging it. I, I don't like understand. take the fur coat off. That type of shit to me is crazy. Like, well, I don't, I don't. If you got a good little lick happening, stay under the radar. You can't get bitches if you don't do that, though. Somehow it's I'm all joking, ties. It all ties. Into you know that's what it's for. All ties. Into, y'all are the. <laughs> don't, don't, don't point that ashy ass finger at me. Wow. Listen, my man. finger is well moisturized. Okay, a, a vino. It, it's not their fault. It's the men's fault. Go get a chick off your personality, idiot. <laughs> yeah, right. When when did that start happening? That's that's how I, I mean I got burnt in the process, but not, she liked me for my personality. Yeah, you gotta stop going back to you getting burnt, bro. <laughs> she Listen, liked me I, for me. I'm not mad at I'm not mad at women that like get dudes for their money though, because dudes not leave either. with it. They leave with that. It's like yo, you you showing that? That's what you showing? You got money? That, all right, so give me some of that. Yeah, I'm ladies, not mad get at your either. money. I'm not mad at women getting their money. Um, 
where we at with time? Because I do want to talk about Worst Roommate Ever, but maybe y'all should watch it and then we can I, come back. I saw the trailer for it when I was watching the, uh, part three of the Kanye uh, doc, which, um, which, which came out last night. Amazing documentary. Mm. I don't know if anybody hasn't seen it. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen it by now, but um, I, I started watching the trailer for that and that looks really good. So each episode is a, a different roommate. It's not like one yeah, cohesive no. thing. Well, there mm -hmm. is one that's a two-parter. My man's is going crazy in Queens. Mm -hmm. um, I do want you guys to watch it so we can come back and talk about it. I will say the woman in Far Rockaway, Sonia or whatever her name is, I hope they start a GoFundMe for her because she really got fucked up. But Sonia, no working lawyer is on Craigslist looking for a room in Far Rockaway. <laughs> She's a lawyer. She no, no. he out. was pretending to be a working lawyer and, and he, he was, was looking, looking for, for on Craigslist for a room in Far Rockaway. Yeah. Lawyer's not doing that, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone unemployed may not be doing that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. That's, shout out to Far Rock. I got to watch that because I did see the, uh, the trailer for it and I was like, okay, this was like one of those interesting documentaries of murder and crime and... and Everyone in the two-parter was like, he was just, you know, so handsome. And then they showed, like, showed him. And maybe I got a little sugar in the tank. Because I was like, that man is not handsome. <laughs> How do all these chicks Yo. say everything? Like, he was so handsome and convincing. Like, I'm like, but wait, that's, that's how, the handsome man? But that's how I felt felt about, uh, is it Ted Bundy? Yes. They were like, oh, I was looking at him like, I was like, Ooh. I was like, women were like in love with this guy? Like, he... They had like, Zac Efron played him. He he must be handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Zac Efron looks a lot better than Ted, the real Ted Bundy. I don't know. The real Ted Bundy was not a handsome. Hit. Like, come on, fam. Like, he, what woman was going like crazy over him? Killer. Or maybe I think that now because I know that he's a serial killer and that's what I associate with a, a serial killer looking like because he's Ted Bundy. So maybe back then they didn't think, look at him and say he looks like a serial killer. Ted Bundy would do numbers in this era. Chicks is just going to anyone's house. Ted Bunny would go crazy right now. Mad heads in the fridge. Like he wouldn't even need to work that for it. Diamond. I saw a disturbing video online of a um a little girl that was almost abduct, ab abducted, mm. and some lady that was standing there like stopped it. Like it's the it was this it was the creepiest like just like most bothersome video. Like she was at like an ice cream stand or something. And the door was open in the car, and the lady was working at the ice cream stand and it was a little girl that was buying ice cream. So the lady, it looks like the lady knows her from the neighborhood. She probably goes there all the time. And um, she's talking, but it's a guy standing on the side that's on his phone. And when the lady turned around to go, you know, get the ice cream, the guy waved at the little girl. You know, just like waved and the little girl mm. waved back, whatever. But you could tell that the woman knew something wasn't sketchy. Like it was a car park right there. The door that was the, that was on the side of the sidewalk was open, the rear door was open and the guy was standing outside on the phone and there was another dude in the driver's seat. And the woman starts like really locking in on the guy, like looking at him, looking at him, paying attention. So then when the girl leaves to start walking, I guess, to go home, the guy kind of positions himself at like a pole near the door of the car mm -hmm. and he's on his cell phone, whatever. So the girl's like, little girl's walking and she could see the setup coming. Like soon as she gets to the side of the door that's open, this dude is gonna push this girl in the car and it's somebody already in the driver's seat and they just going to peel off. Yeah. So the lady came from around the ice cream stand and like literally like 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 a quick walk got to the little girl and just kind of like pushed her forward and started walking with her up the street and then the dude like just closed the car door got in the car and drove off like it was the it was like because you st you saw in that moment this is how shit happens. Mm -hmm. Like these are how kids are like abducted. And the fact that this lady was so sharp and was like so observant and saw the whole play before it happened was just like, damn, like, because I don't, most people would have missed that mm -hmm. because it literally didn't seem like I didn't, I didn't see the play. I had to watch the video again. Like, oh, okay. Like, but just watching it at first, I'm like, how does she even notice that? But then you see the dude on the phone, he keeps looking at the girl and he's acting like he's talking and this is the, the car. Why is this back door just open? Like, and I was just like, damn, man, it's some scary shit. Like it was some scary, scary shit to know that if that lady, didn't catch that and just turned around to go back in the store like that little girl would yeah. be mm -hmm. like that's wild what they're doing now with the with the car services like you know the apps that we we do like you get in the car and they'll drive for like a block and like stop and a white van will pull up on the side of you like a white van will pull up on the side of you like 
a van is following the Uber and they'll stop and block you in. People like, are it's, fucking it's so sick, fucking man. It's so fucking scary. Like, Bury those scary. motherfuckers under the jail. Yeah, those type of dudes, like I said, I you know, you prey on women and children. Like, I think that you should, it should be severe, severe penalties for that. Yeah. That like, you should have should to For pay. money, and it's all for money. That's sick. Yeah. It was some scary shit watching that shit. So, yeah, be careful, man. Just be observant. Even if, you know, a kid is not yours, just be observant. Like, it's, it's I think it's our job to protect, you know, kids especially, but each other as well. Like, if you see funny shit and shit doesn't seem right, like, you know, watch for these kids because it's some sick fuckers out here, man. That, that's why I fall. I think prison reform on the other side, I fall on the fucking right wing side. There should be life sentences, not just for murder. Oh, I'm like, no, I'm with that. Lock these motherfuckers up forever. I'm, you're you're I'm, not going to get reformed. I don't want you back on the street. Like, I've no, said it before. stay your ass in jail. I've said it before. And, you, you know, preying people, on women and, and kids, stay in jail forever. Fuck I got you. I got a bit of a, a, a lash back because I said that if, if a man is convicted of rape or pedophilia, he should be killed. And then people are like, oh, but you don't know if he, he could be convicted of rape and it was a wrong conviction. No, I'm talking about the ones that we know mm. without a doubt. Like, you have the. DNA, you have the evidence that he raped this woman or he, you know, w- was molesting this child. Like the ones that are clear cut, kill him. Kill him. Put him down. I'm I, all for listen, that. I get kill him. I if we're going to have the death penalty, if we're going to have the death penalty for murders, have the death penalty for pedophiles and rapists. Straight up. I just, murder is understandable to me. I can understand how you can murder somebody. Like, but that shit. Yeah, but some people just murder just because they want to sure. steal a hundred dollars. Like oh, we yeah. just saw the yeah, fucking people, yeah. the, the 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 fucking maniac that killed this young girl mm-hmm. a, a couple months ago at Burger King. Shot her for a hundred dollars at Burger King. But no. crimes crimes of passion don't count as murder, right? Those are more manslaughter. No, it, no, you can still can murder, murder one. Yeah. I, don't, I don't give a fuck if he was passionate. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't care like how much you love me. Yeah. Like right I don't now, care if you watch the Kanye doc and yeah. felt inspired. No, you <laughs> murdered that person. You get into a heated argument right now and I bash you in the head with this mic. That's not murder. It wasn't premeditated. It just well, it would be murder one. It could be murder two, three, yeah, whatever. It could be second degree yeah. murder. But yeah, probably not first degree. But I, I, I know what Damaris is saying as far as you could make sense in some cases of people killing people. Not that it's right, but you yeah. could make sense that that would happen. As far as rape or preying on children or anything, there's you're not going to make any sense of that yeah. ever. It was just a, it was just a, some brothers that killed their stepfather because they found out he was molesting their little sister. Mm. I think we saw that it was like maybe a month ago as well. And I was like, yeah, let them free them. If you if they caught their stepfather molesting their their their, their sister, kill them. And that's where it's like, supposed to happen. You're supposed to kill them. And with those crimes too, it's like we know our jail systems are not actually correctional facilities. They're no, not they're correcting not any of these people. So you could anything. give a rapist 25 years. He gonna get out. He's not gonna... Uh, duh. Glad I was reformed in there. Yeah, I no, learned my weren't. lesson. No, you didn't. But yeah, be careful because that video was definitely like, damn, man, like this little girl would have been in that car and family would never would have probably saw her again. Like, it's some scary but, times. But that's also kind of what outside of the obvious with gentrification and, and cities changing, like the neighborhood is kind of dead now mm-hmm. as far as like everybody knowing everybody and everyone knowing each other's kids and like looking out and, and, and looking at shit. They're like, oh, that, that's not right. Yeah. I've been in this neighborhood forever. That's not right. Those days That's kind of gone in so many places. I mean, there's still some, but mm-hmm. that shit is extinct. Mm-hmm. So it's super unsafe to just have your kids chilling because you don't know nobody in your own neighborhood. <laughs> People don't speak to each other no more. Like yeah. people don't have those neighbor, neighborly bonds anymore. Uh, everybody is, you know, in their own worlds now, in their own mm-hmm. little bubbles. And you know, certain areas, certain areas still have that still sense of neighborhood. And you know, you go to your neighbor's house for cookouts in the backyard, <laughs> watch the games and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But for the most part, people are more these days are more kept to themselves and and to their families in their own little spaces. But if you're in a neighborhood, you should definitely make sure that you know you know your neighbors and know the neighbors, the families and, you know, all the kids know each other and yeah. the adults watch out for the kids on the block. Like, you need that because, again, it's, you have things like that, you know, that video where people infiltrate these neighborhoods and prey on these little kids and, you know, abduct the kid and you never see them again. Now everybody's fucked up and destroyed about it. But, yeah, man, prayers to anybody that, you know, has ever dealt with that. Luckily, I've never dealt with, like, 
a family member uh, being abducted or kidnapped. Yeah, thank or, God, neither have I. You know what I mean? But families deal with that. It's a real thing. We, you know, kids go missing every day. And uh, some of them, most of them are never seen again. So protect the kids, man. Yeah. Well, I don't want to end on a somber note. I don't know, right? Anything funny happen? Funny? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that was just something I watched and that shit, because I, I think that was the first time I've ever seen that mm. where it was stopped or it was like, it could have happened if this woman, you know what I mean? Like just seeing that was yeah. like, yo, that's how it happens? Like, like I said, I had to watch it again to see even see. I was like, oh, the door's open. He was going to push in the door. Like, but yeah, um, Slaughterhouse. Mm-hmm. We have some friends in that group. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I don't even want to just try to make this sound political or anything. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. And we both have have ties to the all group. four of them. Yeah, the group. Uh it's it's interesting. Um, you know, know knowing some behind the scene things. Uh mm -hmm. I don't think I mean, at this point, it's over with. I don't think that is something that uh people really not in a disrespectful way, but people aren't really checking for it. They don't really care about it as much as they did at one point. I, I don't. I don't think. Mm. Um, I think that people recognize that the, the at the time the group was a a very good group, uh, some really good MCs. Uh, but I think that time has too much time has passed, and I think that with you know everything is a, a right now or what have you done for me lately type of culture. But Slaughterhouse definitely still has that core fan base that I don't think. Oh no, they will, still will ever leave, no, and that does. But I think I think care. even I don't think it's a small group. I think their core is, but I, I think even big. the core is kind of like moved on. I, I don't think they even are thinking about the group being being together and putting out music. I don't. I don't. I think they've given up on that. Well, well. I okay, I can see that point of view, but I think if two of them are going out to make an album called "The Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse," all of the Slaughterhouse fan base is going to care. And oh no, it. Yeah. I'm talking about. The, the group collectively, okay. That I, I think people, the fan base has moved on from the idea. From the of idea, that oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Game. That's what I mean. But as far as what uh, Crook and Joel are doing, uh, I think that definitely the fan base is going to uh, listen to it, and they're going to see, you know, what they produce and what they put out. I think obviously you have, you know, two out of the four MCs that are really talented. Mm -hmm. uh, they put out a good record. Yeah, I like uh, the record. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear anything outside of that song, so I don't know what else is to come or what else is happening. But they, they put out a track list. Oh, they did. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't see the track list, but yeah, I think. Listen, man, you know, life goes on. I see both sides, and I, and I promise that's not a cop out. And mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you where I see both sides. I see Joe and Royce being hurt and upset about it, and I totally get that. You're now taking the the name of the album is the fall and rise of Slaughterhouse. You're using our logo like, yes, you need to tell me. Crook and Joe, I don't have as much right to that I, logo. I, I, as listen, anybody I'm, I'm going to get there. Okay. I can see them being hurt in that regard of like, though, this is our thing. The four of us, you're not going to tell 50% of the group when they're selling merch with the pig logo. Like I, I can totally see Royce and Joe being upset about that from a personal standpoint and from a business standpoint. Now, I didn't totally agree with Royce's IG caption of how he broke down the value. I think there's more value to be had now that this turmoil is happening because we live in a society where turmoil brings attention. Yeah. For them to get back together and put out an album, I think this actually adds to that story and adds to the value of people wanting them to reconnect. Mm -hmm. Now, I see Joel and Crook's side of saying, Hey, we've been trying to get this shit together for years. I have a fan base that's asking questions and I need to eat as well. So if y'all don't want to rap no more at Slaughterhouse, we're going to do that and we're going to tell the fans why. I get that perspective, but I also get the side of finding out with the rest of the world that you're doing an album called The Rise and Fall of a group that were trademarked together as four equal partners. I would feel a way. I would. But why would you feel a way if your these gentlemen exhausted all opportunities and tried to get things to work and tried to get everybody back on the same page and it seems like it wasn't they were beating a dead horse or, or dead pig at this point. <laughs> That's funny. Um no, I I do get that part. That's why it's a bit of a cop out, but I I really do see both sides cuz if I'm Joel and and Crook 
I mean, granted, they've both been putting out solo shit and they put out an album together um, that was good. It's just, I don't know, like, a heads up? No. Nah. It's, I it's think, our I think, shit, I think, though. I think, yeah, but I think after a while, you lose that. When you reach out to somebody and you're, you're the one reaching out, you're the one extending the olive branch, you're the one trying to mend things, you're the one trying to, you know, make things work, and that's not being met with any reach back. Mm -hmm. When you decide that you're no longer extending the olive branch and you're going to go do what you want to do and do your own thing, I don't think that it's fair to say, oh, you could have given this person a heads up. I was trying to mend this thing and make this thing work for years. And it wasn't and it wasn't being reciprocated. No energy was given back, or the energy that was given was real, like, nah, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. Mm. It's like, all right, so what I'm I'm not supposed to do anything for the rest of my life. Uh, no, I, I and get, I have just I as right, that, but... I have just as much right to this logo, mm. to this, to this brand, to this fan base as anybody else in this group. So if I if me and another member of the group decide that we're gonna go this way and pivot and do something else then I don't think anybody can be upset about it if we are exhausted all like resources and trying to mend this thing and make it work. It's mm. like, what are we supposed to do? Just not do nothing with this for the rest of our lives? No. I, I completely That's agree with you on, on that end, but I can also see Royce and Joe going like, you have our name in the title of your album. You're selling merch with our logo. You're not going to tell nobody? <laughs> it's, but it's our logo too. For yeah, sure. But if you leave this podcast right now and I get hop in your seat and we still call it New Rory and Mall and sell t-shirts that say New Rory and Mall on it, you're not going to feel some type of way? We're in that exact position and I don't feel the type of way. Um, it's a little different. I get what you're saying. It's a little different. Yeah, I, I see the connections, but I also don't because I said everyone in my mentions of the same. I was like, these are different situations. It's different situations. You guys but like, entire listen, new if, brand, logo, name, everything. I'll put it this way. If I'm sitting here, don't want to do Duce Palooza ever again, and someone else is saying, hey, let's do it, let's do it, let's get it, let's get it all together, like, come on, come on. And then you do like some kind of Duce Palooza shit with the name, I'm going to feel a fucking way. If, the, if they were trying to get you to be a part of it and you kept telling them no? Yeah, I'm going to feel, I'm going to feel a way. And that's, you're crazy for that. If somebody is trying to get you to be a part of something that you started and you built, I'm, that's and you're saying I'm not legal, doing that no speak, more. I'm speaking from a legal standpoint in that regard. Yeah, I'm going but to if, feel but away. you can't. But it, but the thing is, if you built something with somebody, if we're building something together, and I'm like, yo, I no longer want to do this shit, mm -hmm. and you're like, yo, come on, man, let's do it, let's do it for years, and I'm like, nah, I'm doing something else. I'm more successful than I've ever been doing this other thing, and I'm saying like, oh, nah, I don't want to do that. So I. You supposed to just sit back and and just like just be, with your thumb in your ass, not do nothing. No, just come up with your own name. Just not that, not Lucy, that brand anymore. Different. Yeah, it's a different brand. Yeah, but I don't think that I don't think that you know I could. You could be mad though if the person was trying to make you a part of it. But They're legally, trying to keep it together. I, legally, I could like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. But this is no longer like brand of slaughterhouse is for. If it's just two of y'all, it is no longer slaughterhouse. Yeah, but that's why it's called the rise and fall of slaughterhouse. I understand that right? but you're selling you're selling merch with the slaughterhouse logo on it. You're profiting from something that we all four of us have built together. Yeah, but if you don't want to be a part of it, I'm supposed to just let it die no, and just like leave it. Pay, run me my money for our, my part of the merch. And I don't and I don't know I don't know what the legal binding agreement is between those four gentlemen. So I have literally no idea. But yeah, no, I don't, and I don't care to know. That's their business. Yeah, for but, sure. You know, I'm not. I'm just. I just don't think that you know people can be mad at Joel and Crook for wanting to continue their music careers and wanting to do stuff with a brand that they build or, you know, just use the logo. Like, I just don't think that you can be upset at that. It's like these gentlemen were trying for years to keep this together and make this thing work. And they decided, OK, we're not being met with a certain energy. And obviously this is not happening. So let's move forward and pivot in our careers. Listen, if anyone understands Joel Crook in that regard, I understand jumping out the yeah. window and saying, all right, fuck it. I tried. Yeah. I'm done with this shit. Mm -hmm. I get it. But I also can see the side of feeling a way about using a name and a logo I get that it. is the four of us I get as it. equal I get partners it. in it. I can I see it. it. Now, as far as personal feelings, I mean, I don't, I know all four of those gentlemen. I don't know their intricate friendships between them in that regard. I've, you know. There is no friendship. Well, that's clear now, but. <laughs> it's like, we can be honest, no friendship. Those gentlemen aren't friends. Like. 
It's mm. just it is what it is, bro. Like we got to stop acting like they're not friends. When you do certain things to people, you show where your friendship stands. I, I agree there. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like okay, we're not friends. We got it. We obviously we want to do something to keep it together for the fan base mm. and for the people that have supported us. Uh, but if that's not able to happen, and you know people decide to pivot and do something else, I get it. Using the logo and you know how people could kind of sort of you know turn their nose up at that. I understand that, but is it wrong? I don't think so, because I had just as much to do with building this brand and making this logo what it was as anybody else. Yeah. So yeah. that's all I'm saying. I just don't feel like it's wrong in that regard. Like, you know, they. Ex I think uh, Joel and Crook exhausted all, you know, all they could on trying to keep the situation alive and keep it going and keep it moving forward. And at some point, you just got to move on, man. You got you to move sure. on. I, I just don't want to see... I, I, me, personally, I don't want to see it turn into uh, something, you know, too personal and something too ugly because yeah. I, can, I can see it going there because I know the four personalities and the four egos. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I could see it going there. I hope not, you know, but, you know, things happen, man. And more importantly, I'm just happy that, you know, Joel and Crook decided to do something, stand on it and, 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 and do what, what's best for them in their careers and, and what, they, what they're trying to do and what they're trying to build. Like as men, you got to do what you got to do for yourself and your family sometimes. For sure. You know what no, I mean? I, 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 I get that point. I think that that's just what Joel and Crook did. So I don't, I don't, I don't, Think that they were wrong. That's my 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 stance. I don't think they, mm. were, they were wrong. I wish they could have worked it out and made it happen because it was a a, a really good According thing. To them, really they, good. they tried. Well, yeah, absolutely, they <laughs> tried. But you know, you you not. We know. No, I'm I'm, I'm 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 aware of that yeah. regard. So but, it is what it is. But good record. Uh, you know, salute to Joel and Crook and and everybody else involved and anybody else that has something to do with Slaughterhouse. It was a great a great group. Uh. Really, uh, four talented MCs and, and and artists. Objectively, I hope Glasshouse someday sees the light of day. It's a fucking great album. Yeah, I don't think it will, but you know, again, sometimes things just aren't meant to to happen, and things you know fall where they fall where they're gonna fall, and land where they're gonna land, and you know, it is what it is. I actually think it puts them in a perfect position to make music again together. That, that's just where I disagree with Royce. I don't think the value dropped in it. I think you upped the value of people wanting to hear from Slaughterhouse because now they know that there's this big ass divide. Royce said the value dropped? Well, he had made a, a comparison, and I'm paraphrasing, on Instagram of saying uh, four people own a house and then two people decide to leave the house, burn it down, and then build another one at a lower value and not tell their partners that they burnt the house down. I... Again, I'm not Royce. He has personal investment feelings into Slaughterhouse where I don't. Mm -hmm. I just think the value went up. <laughs> I don't think the house is burnt down. Well, I think it just added more attention to what's going on in that house. <laughs> if it's been years and we can't agree on a plan of attack, do we never attack? Do we never pivot? Do we never move on? Do we never... I, I understand. I, I don't know what the conversation was between the four of them. I don't, I don't either. I, I don't just, know. I'm just asking. But, if you... If you if you're in that situation and it's been years and you can't agree on a plan of attack, mm. I mean, Ben Simmons had to, he, Philadelphia had to move Ben Simmons, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it is what it is. Get, go somewhere else. You, yeah. you might be happier there. You know, do what you got to do. I mean, at, at some point, you just have to move on. Like, what are we doing? Like, obviously, it's never, this is never going to happen if you can't even get communication from your partners. Like, so let me ask you, and I'm not saying this is my opinion, but let me ask you this. Why can't you just go rap? You're a great rapper. Go rap about some other shit. No, I, I agree. Or, I'm, I'm or address the shit on your album. Just don't name it the Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse. Don't use the logo. Just go and tell your truth on your album. I mean, yeah. Because bo both, both of those gentlemen, Joel and Crook, are amazing rappers and, they, and, and they make they amazing out, music. And they put out. They've been putting yeah. out music. So yeah, I understand that. But, you know, again, it, do are you mad at them for that? No. That's all I'm saying. I, listen, like, I can't be mad. As someone that was close, I still don't know the rise and fall of Slaughterhouse. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to the album. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, because you just you, you like you like the MCs, you like the, the art, and you know that they're two of the better MCs. So it's like, yeah, I, I want to hear what they gotta say about it. If this is the rise and fall of it, let me hear why it, it rose and it fell. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's all I'm saying. But I don't think that you can be mad at people for trying to, you know, just go another way when things seem that it's not gonna happen. 
everybody has their limit. Like it's For been sure. years of us trying to get this to work. It's not working. Let's just uh, one of the stipulations on. was getting off shady. We got off shady. Still nothing. I, yeah, no, I I, I can you know totally so I, get Joel and Court going fam. I'm done with this shit. Yeah, Fuck it. Like that's what I'm saying. Everybody has their limit and the point where they're reaching and just like, all right, we're done. So it is what it is. But again, you know, salute to uh those gentlemen and hopefully everyone is happy in business and in life and yeah, for sure. We'll see what happens. And hopefully, I'm not going to leak it, but I hope somebody leaks Glass House because <laughs> it's a fucking great album. <laughs> no, good album. They was rapping their asses off. Really good all project. Four really good project. Let Just Blaze do it. Just should do it. I wonder if Shady, album? I wonder if Shady in that stipulation with the contract owns that music. Because you could make I'm a case, sure do. which I've been through, if I didn't pay anyone yet via my budget, you technically don't own that music. I'm sure Just Blaze got paid. Don't get don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, I'm no, sure no, Shady mean. paid Just Blaze. No but if mean. we're making music and I have not paid anyone from this budget, then I should still you do not own this music. Yeah, I get it. Which I'm, I've done and won. So yeah, I want. I wonder what that that Glasshouse contract is because that that music should come out someday. Yeah, I don't think it will, but it should. Yeah. Um. What's the date for that? And then we then we can wrap this up. March 11th. March, March 11th, Rise and Fall of Slaughterhouse. Joel King. Ortiz, King Crooked. Uh, I mean, listen, man, I know all these gentlemen personally. Um, so, you know, again, it's salute to all of them. And let's, let's hear what they got to say. And like I said on Drink Champs, when I was on there with Crooked and Nori asked me about Slaughterhouse, I said, thought you got to talk to those four gentlemen. One of them's right here. Yeah. What the fuck are you asking me for? I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, we'll, we'll we'll get the project in here with Joel and Crook have to say. We'll hear this out of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you think we'll get the rise and fall of Pete Davidson? I think we got it, right? Kanye put a video out. Uh, I think it's just the rise. I don't think Pete is falling. <laughs> Listen, you know what? In all of this, whatever happened to... Because you're not supposed to be mad at the guy. Can never be mad at the right? guy. Right? So it's like... I get it, Kanye, a lot of it is trolling, a lot of it is just poking, you know. It's definitely trolling. Yeah, so it's like, I get it, but it's like, it gets to a point now with this video and him burying Pete in the video and... He didn't bury him, he planted him. <laughs> Pause. When you plant something, you have to dig. But his, Paul, his head was above and he put rose seeds. He, the rose grew from the concrete. The concrete, yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> no, y'all not on Kanye. Y'all not on I Kanye and I's level. I see. <laughs> no, you and Kanye. You and Ye on the same. I get it. I, I yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the compete. Yeah. The rose grew from the compete. I got it. I got it. And then he he snipped the roses, and you know that's I I thought reconciliation when you give someone flowers. He was giving Pete his flowers. Got it. Don't give Pete his flowers while he's in the dirt and he's the flower. I just it just comes across a little. Along with everything else you've been saying about this gentleman, it just it just kind of fits a different narrative. Like, oh, you really trying to get him out of here? You trying to bury him for real? Because you've been trying to do that on social media for the past however many weeks, <laughs> trying to bury him in his career. He said everyone lived happily ever after except for Pete. Except for Pete. <laughs> Pete didn't live. See, so he buried him. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, man. But um, and I don't want to get too serious, but to say we all lived happily ever after except for Pete, who is openly manic depressive and like on yeah. mad medication is a really fucked up thing to say. That's what I'm saying. This, this to me was like the first out of all of this shit where I was like, all right, yeah, you might be going he a little drag, too far. He dragging this shit. Yeah, you're going a little too it's, far it's, with this it, shit. All right, I'll say it. It's corny as fuck. It is. I still laugh at it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to even look at this shit no more because I'm just like, uh, either y'all going to work it out or you're not. Like I, like I said, I like the way Miguel handled his his marriage and his divorce mm -hmm. and his remarriage, like did it behind scenes away from social media, just popped out with a photo like, yeah, we ain't got my wife back because that's my wife and I love her and we had to work it out. Mm -hmm. Stay off social media. You don't need the, you don't need the world involved in that type of shit. Well, Kanye is mentally ill. I think to a degree we all are. We all have struggle no, with mental health. No, but Kanye health. is literally mentally ill. No, we have yeah. to address that when we're addressing Kanye. This is not a regular person we're talking Oh, absolutely. About. Uh -huh. I know that. All right, let's go back to the documentary in the, the third episode. What Cootie said after College Dropout went out and he was working on the next one, he was getting doing more press. He said, I'm going to become a character. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, and every time the camera went on, Kanye became that character. Mm -hmm. I get it. Is it a character? 
No. Granted, I no, I do think he has some mental health problems. He, he's bipolar. He's uh, certified bipolar. He definitely has uh, Asperger type symptoms from what I've seen of someone that's been around those people for a long time. Um, I just do think there is a character to it, and he's doing it with the best character cast ever, which is the Kardashian family. Like this is two empires of low ball entertainment coming together in that regard. low ball entertainment it is that's what that shit is that shit is turn your fucking brain off entertainment which is fine I, I like that type of shit it's a, it's, I've, it's watched, I've watched every episode of 90 Day it has, 90 Day it has a spot in my brain like I, I definitely we all need that type of shit yeah. that's why they're geniuses in their craft Kanye also happens to be in a genius in some substance as well but he's talented for sure he also lives in that character world of being this person that he was Way way before the Kardashians. Yeah. So when these two fucking empires of that meet, yeah, you might get fucking what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. When have we ever seen Kanye on South Beach that much? Well, <laughs> this is a show, man. It's well, a he's, show. He's, he's, he's not, he's a single man now. So he, now he could. When he was making Donda in Atlanta, you ain't see him butt inside that little jail cell. Now he's using Miami and his fuck is on every single boulevard. He's on Washington. He on yeah. Ocean. He fucking on, he on Collins. He, he fucking everywhere with his he, chick. He outside. This is a show. You don't think he's not calling the paparazzi? Oh, yo, no. we going. Oh, no, that's definitely. He's definitely a show with that girl. It's definitely. He had Wet Willies. Kanye West don't go to Wet Willies. He, <laughs> he was just with a, a, a other. A, Julian. Julia. Yeah. Ju, what's her name? Yeah, Ju, but he Julia was trying Fox. to make Julia be Kim, but Julia no. She you already did Coke it? with the weekend. He had to go find. He had to go find a real. Find it was a in a movie. movie. I know you stupid, bro. <laughs> she already did Coke. Just don't worry. This part is going on, on Patreon just because uh I like my job and I think Big might take it from me. But no. Nah. Uh, we got to think about the fact that Kim went from being from with one mentally insane person to another, per- not mentally insane, but mentally unhealthy person to another one who was also mentally unhealthy. So she has some things she needs to address within herself. Talk because about they are, it. B- both have diagnosed mental health issues. Oh uh, well, that's fucked but up. But maybe she's Why a can't, healer. Well, I have diagnosed maybe. mental health issues. I, no one can love me now. Yeah, like maybe she's a healer. <laughs> the fuck? You know, when some women are healers, they feel like they can fix, fix men and help them. Well, so. she failed. I wouldn't want her healing me if she failed with the first one. Is it his, her responsibility? Though? No, it's not her. It's not her responsibility to heal at all. But if you are saying I can't be with this man anymore because. He is mentally ill, and then you go be with someone else who is known suicidal, mentally ill. I have a question. Yes. Who says Kim Kardashian is not mentally ill? Oh, I listen. I'm, I literally just said I feel like you know she has to address her issues. <laughs> we all have mental health issues. It's different from having mental health issues and being mentally ill, Mall, and you know it. Is it? Is it? I yes. think to be successful in the world that Kim is the goat in, you have to have a certain mentally ill brain to do so. And I don't mean that in a insulting way at all. This is also coming from someone that is diagnosed with that. You, But to be successful in that world, yes, you have to have a level of mental illness. I think in a lot of jobs and genres, whatever the fuck you want to call it, you have to be mentally ill to be the best at it. I think our greatest artists were all mentally ill. Like To be in certain entertainment parts, to succeed the way these people have, you have to be mentally ill. <laughs> a sane person cannot do it. I it's just, impossible. I just said we all suffer from mental. Well, some just to higher degrees, but yeah. I think in entertainment period, you have to have a level of mental illness to succeed in it. Yeah. Because it's a, sane, it's a it's a mentally, the concept of entertainment is mentally ill. So you have to be mentally ill to be at the top of it. I agree. Yeah. I think that it definitely takes a certain level of a, uh, you being able to detach yourself from certain things emotionally. Yes. <laughs> uh, in order to be super successful in entertainment um, or anything at that matter. Like, I think to be a, a super successful athlete, I think that, you know, just mentally your brain doesn't have certain, it's not equipped with certain things mm-hmm. because you've been so fixed on, you know what I mean? Like this, this is what you know. You didn't give yourself opportunity to get stronger mentally in other areas. And to you could go in without mental illness and come out with it because that's the only way to be successful. To mm-hmm. be a fucking football player, yeah, you could go in the most mentally health person on earth. You could oh, be no, you super stable. Up. To be able to have the mentality at that fucking level of athletics in that violence, you mm-hmm. have to be a mentally ill person. Absolutely. 
That's what I'm saying. You, we all have it. We all suffer from it. I think that some of us just dive deeper into it, and we some of us never come out of it. Mm. You know what I mean? I think that's the difference. I think some of us have the ability to feel when we're slipping and we're like, okay, this is getting bad. It's the the we Heath Ledger back a little bit. Yeah, we example. Pull back a little bit. Like, all right, I'm almost in too deep with this shit. Let me pull back, get back to myself, back to my roots, and you know, ground myself, center myself, because now I'm way too indulged in this fucking world. But he, like Heath Ledger acting shit. Not every story is Jim Carrey's story, where now he is, from what we see, a very mentally sound and in touch with himself type type of person. Mm -hmm. He lost himself in that. You have to be mentally ill to be that good at acting. Yeah. You have to be. There's Absolutely. no way, no sane person can get into that character without having something fucked up up here. Absolutely, <laughs> I agree. I, that's what I'm saying. You, we all have it. It's just how we tap into it, mm -hmm. how far we go into the, our mental health. And Because if you have physical health issues, which we've all been sick, we've all, you know, something, not maybe something too severe, but you, you fix it, you yeah. correct it. Same thing with mentally. We all have it. It's there. Sometimes we, we get depressed. We get, you know, whatever. But then do we stay in that? Do we mm -hmm. come, How do we come out of that depression? Do we start changing our lifestyle and start changing the things that we do daily and to, to get out of that depression and get out of that mental health zone where it's, you're not in a healthy environment? Sometimes people are like, nah, I want to see where this, how far this goes. I want to stay in this depression. I want to operate in this. I want to create through this depression. Like, that's and, depression. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> just depression. like, yo, what the fuck? Like, you got to take time to 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 you know get back to your happy spot and your in your zone of peace and and just being you know at one and centered, man. Like because like you said, to be that famous, that popular, and you have to be on it all the time. When you step outside, it's a thousand cameras on you, a million eyes on. The environment doesn't call for what you're talking about. No, I agree. And to be the best at it, you have to stay in that environment. You got to stay in it. You got to stay in it. So yeah, I agree. We, you know, but uh, he went a little too far with the video though. I agree. No, I, little, I thought it was corny. A little too far, but it is what it is. Um, Still a great record, though. No, really. I fucking love that record. That's probably like, one of my favorite records. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, we not, never talk about the music when it comes to Kanye. It's everything around it. Um, is, that a, is that it, D? Uh, say goodbye to your listeners. Tell them you love them. All right. So, uh, yeah, man. I think we, we kind of touched on what we needed to touch on. Uh, things were touched. Things were touched. Uh, Consensually, <laughs> consensually, we touched some some things. I'm trying to be touched. All right, man. Listen, <laughs> we'll 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 yes, we'll, yes, we'll, we'll see y'all. We'll talk to y'all next in a while. week. Uh, King Von and, and DSPs now. Yes, cool kids. I'm cool sure kids. there's some more stuff coming out. More um, music coming out. Um, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll see y'all next week. Have fun. Be safe. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. You can't have ginger without nigger. And you can't spell nigga without ginger. And niggas love ginger. Peace. No worry, I'm not.